Hey everyone, your host Nick here, and you're listening to the official podcast of 4playernetwork.com. First, I want to remind you that we are a fully independent podcast, quite literally just a group of friends who have met once a week since 2008 to talk about video games. If you like our show, the best thing you can do for us is be active in our community. I recommend Discord. You can subscribe to our show, leave us a review on your preferred podcast service, or if you're so inclined, bless us with your patronage on Patreon or Twitch. If you're new, all you need to know is this. We record these shows live every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Central on Twitch, and the audio version launches on all podcast services on Friday morning. Patreon and Twitch supporters will even get the show a day early on Thursdays. But if you want to know more about any of this, about what we do, or find all the important links you need, simply visit us at 4playernetwork.com. And that's it. This is the only ad you'll ever hear on this show. So with that said, thank you for listening. Let's get started. Let's uh, let's get this. Our last podcast ever. Hey everyone, welcome to Four Player Podcast, episode seven hundred and seventy seven, the Lucky Show, the last show of twenty twenty three. I'm just kidding, guys. It's not our last show. Nobody panic. I am your host, Nick Henderson. I'm joined by Brad Simons. What up, Nolan Hedstrom? Hey, how's it going, everybody? Christopher Guthridge. The Wikipedia page for Stiltman says that he is one of Daredevil's most enduring arch foes. Wow, and you didn't know who that was. <laughs> Fucking pathetic. Like, am I right? Uh, this, is, uh, this, is, this is the guy that Daredevil spends all his time fighting. <laughs> Not Bullseye uh, or the, or the what's his name? Uh, yeah. Fisk. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Kingpin's actually a Spider-Man villain. So. Uh, and also, of course, joining us is Christopher Davis. Hello, Chris. Good evening. And uh, yeah, so this welcome, guys. Been, I, it? I, really? Woo. Oh, that's new. I feel like I've never seen I've never seen Chris Davis put some Bailey's in his coffee Irish before. Coffee. I've got three weeks off. I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. Yes. This three mother- weeks, man. Must be I'm nice. So comfortable must with the be coffee nice to work in the fucking guess. public sector, huh? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, well, guys, first of all, let me a couple things, a little, little bit of housekeeping here. I want to say uh, it's been a little bit chaotic here the past month. Actually, the past like two months, I feel like it's been pretty chaotic. So we made this dramatic shift. We're like, we're going to start recording the podcast on Tuesdays. And then we've been struggling to hit that <laughs> like every week until now. And now we're on our mm. final podcast of the year. Uh, I was going to say. <laughs> what? Hmm. An yeah. upcoming Tuesday. I don't know. Maybe it should be a Wednesday. We'll don't, talk don't. about that later. <laughs> no, Mm-mm. don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. Um, but anyways, like I said, we're 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 a week away from Christmas, which means next Tuesday is the day after Christmas. I don't. People are gonna be you know traveling, doing things with family, all that stuff. So I don't think we'll be recording next week. We'll, we maybe we'll do some kind of like I don't know. Maybe we'll do more Lethal Company. That's been pretty fun. Um, no one seems down for that. Some pretty good mods out for that now too. Ooh. Oh really? Having mm-hmm. been having there's, an there's unbelievably mods good that time like uh, uh, make uh, enemies that look like your friends, uh, oh. and some of them that will like grab their audio and play it back. Oh, oh I've heard about that. that. Is, that is fucking what? problematic as shit. <laughs> yeah, dude. There's That's some pretty cool. legit stuff now. You can't. Do Let me that. tell you, some of the, some I of the. Uh, I know because you've somehow. <laughs> not been a part of in oh right? you haven't the, you haven't played the game of the, the year of, yeah he's missed out on the among us of 2023 like, yeah absolutely you just played it that one time right oh we've, we've played, played it twice it. now yeah, yeah at least twice and I, I i've done it a few nights with uh community members as well it's so, so unlike it's poser really nick who likes to jump on bandwagony multiplayer games i yeah. i stay stick firm in my uh, anti multiplayer game here. I'm not having fun this in this. Bitch. Yeah, exactly. Hey, hey, real quick. I know we're, this is this podcast is already all over the place, but guess what game I popped in the other day and played for like three hours with my wife? Vampire Survivor. It takes two. Talk- we are oh, yeah, you've talked about that before. We are on the last chapter of It Takes Two finally. That game continues to be fucking amazing. Oh my god. I can't believe it. Wish someone would have told is. Nick that it was a good game. <laughs> Hey, yeah, it was somebody could have. If only. It was my number two game of the year. I just haven't finished it yet. I mean, because it's so much longer Whoa, than it's so it much longer than you two. expect. It's like that game is like legit, like ten to twelve. So are you hours. gonna move it up or down depending on? Um... Oh, of course not. I mean, I I had played. 
Wait, what do you mean move it up or down? No, I'm saying on your list. N- now that you finished it, maybe my you list think came out more a of year or, ago, or Brad. What are you talking about? That was a 2022 game. Oh, you set those retroactively change lists. What? You set those in stone. <laughs> you set your game. With are you your gonna list go in stone? Yeah. I, I never look back. What if I you car- finish that game and it's like literally this is the, my favorite game I've ever played I, now? I, I, I because it, it wrapped up so perfectly. Uh, so you're gonna um, say that was my number one game of 2022? No, you're people are gonna, gonna say be like number two game. That's my number two game of 2022. I know are Brett gonna, is like, trying to make a mockery of the whole like, concept of top, top ten list, and I'm not gonna mockery? I'm not gonna give. No, you- <laughs> Wait, wait. No, wait, I suggest that, that, that Brad that changes his update... list retroactively. <laughs> me suggesting that you could update your list is call is is cause, cause me considering it a mockery? No, I just feel like you're you're like making fun of the whole concept. I don't know. No, I'm, I'm literally no. I think he's being sincere. I think you're Brad's being that sincere. Guy. Being sincere. Uh, you know, last year my top ten didn't have tunic or um citizen sleeper on it. Wait a second. And Wait, you gotta so live it with takes that. two was twenty twenty one. That was Nick, two on, years man. ago. I'm making a, I'm making a point here. <laughs> I'm saying, but that's literally my two and three favorite game of last last year. Well, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, last mm-hmm. year now. Even right, though it's right, not right. on my top ten, like it's updated in my spreadsheet. I don't know about yours. Sure. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I, if, I if all your shit's fake, that's fine. You but. go back and change your top ten list. Of course. That's so... Okay. I mean, it's not like I'm changing, <laughs> re-editing Chris Davis's fucking videos or anything. Oh, I but know, like, but like, then, who are you keeping on... it for? You're keeping it my for opinion. you? Hey, hey, yeah. hey, hey, hey. I keep my list as go- going back as far as I can. I like uh, to look back on, see the games that I've played and enjoyed via these fucking lists. Take a look at your spreadsheets and sip your coffee in the morning no, and go like, Chris, this is crispy, what it's all about. Crispy. This is you what it's are, all about. You are, making, you are making a joke right now, but I shit yeah, you not. I do that. I do that at least once but a week. But that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You obviously <laughs> see the appearance of cataloging it, Nick, but why not update it? Based I mean, on you're like, right. You're right. You're right. Sometimes I look back at a list. Why not spend all your play. time managing your database of games this, you've played before? I'm going to say to get us back on topic of this year, you're not going to finish Baldur's Gate three by the end of the year. No, by the I've time never you make your list, we have, we've all agreed. But like, you might change your opinion when you, I don't know, actually play Act three because it Ugh. actually might dramatically okay. change how you feel about that game. Yeah. Do you think it's going to move in the opposite direction? No, I think could. it's going to go up. I think it's going to go, yeah, go up. It's, it's, it's going to go up. Wait, 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 well, guys, guys, everybody slow down for a second. I, again, I apologize for those listening at home. I know this is chaotic, but Brad, what if I told you Baldur's Gate 3 was already my number one game of the year? And it has well, no matter. you got to make it your go. number zero. Yeah. Well, you're about to play a bunch of it. It could change. I'm just saying. It could. I, you know, you know let, let's, let's take a step back and broaden, you know, the conversation a little bit. I feel like when it comes to like video game opinions on the internet or i don't know any opinions on the internet people are uncomfortable with the idea of someone like having one opinion at opinion? one point and then all of a sudden another point having a different opinion about said Ooh. thing like people are not cool with what? that it's like you like something you hate something and you better never change your opinion on that because oh by yeah. golly, you said it's it's the internet you said something one time and it'll be used as a cudgel that's against what I'm you saying. forever it's not just video games it's not even just like your opinions about about things all i'm saying about the whole like i think it's weird to update your top 10 lists is that like you're gonna lose sight of where you were at the time and that's the whole fucking point Mm. right like like that's the whole fucking point it's like man i did when i was 14 think halo combat evolve was the coolest fucking game that ever existed like and would will ever exist you know and like now i just don't think those chris davis videos still exist you know it's not like i guess but like i just I just don't look back no, like I that. I think I'm, I'm more like likely forward. to forget that I actually think Tunic is better than most games that came out last year if it's on no list. Anyway. You're just changing history, Brad. I like I like Boyd Cooper's a- approach to this in chat. He says it's a time capsule. Or like our lists are yeah. like a time capsule. And you know yeah. what? I, at yeah, the end of the day, my goal. Time <laughs> you want to look at a fantasy. Just because like, I finished if Tunic you always have after the days. year was over. It, it, like me finishing two tunic two weeks late is not like a false time capsule what i'm saying what i'm saying is what i'm saying is when nick has his morning cup of joe and he's sitting in front of his computer looking at his list of games yeah looking at his list of games and whacking it to what amazing taste he has like 
<laughs> what like like if he's looking at a list that's updated no, 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 to no, like okay. today no if he's looking at a list that like he's been updating and it's just like reflects how he feels like now in the moment then it's he's just kind of like fucking I don't know. It it just seems masturbatory. It just seems like he's just kind of like being like, man, yeah, you're right. I do now have good opinions. If you're looking at like a chronicle of your mistakes and like your changing tastes and your changing opinions, and you can really reflect on like how you've grown and changed as a person or I like, like, this. I like what, this. Yeah. what like, you know, things that were important to you before. Like, why is it that I thought Fallout 3 was the greatest game in the fucking world? And now that I've played a number of other Fallout games, I can't, like, go back. And I don't like any of the new ones either. Like, what happened to me? What happened to them? What like, happened like, to that me? That seems like a more... It's to be my game of the year in 2008. I don't yeah. know. Well, you could still write it down somewhere okay. next to the list, okay? Sure, I'm just, sure. I don't... Okay, yeah. now that we've gone we off on that tangent... So now you're keeping two lists what the okay. fuck <laughs> listen listen this is all this is all just a really convoluted segue into uh i want to let everybody who's listening know that we have officially opened up the community voting for the top 10 games of the year you can submit your own personal top 10 list these lists are going to be one used to calculate the community top 10 they will be factored into our 2023 year in review uh, which means they'll kind of go up against all of our other personal lists to kind of make one master list. And three, or two, what was that? I don't remember. Uh, everyone who enters is going to be entered into a drawing for a free game. We're going to pick two winners, and we're going to announce those winners um, at the start of our award show, which as of right now, we are tentatively saying we're going to record on January 9th. Um, so if you're interested in submitting your personal top 10, uh, there's a link in the... Game of the Year 2023 and channel four, and Discord. Your list will be etched in a marble. Yes, so you'll <laughs> never be able to change <laughs> it. Uh, apparently, somebody I set it so you could actually go. It's a it's a Google form, right? So I I, I changed. It, I set it so that you could log back in and change it if you want to make changes all the way up until the 31st of December, which is the cutoff date, by the way. Uh, and somebody is uh, Skyler is in our Discord is having trouble making changes, so I don't know what's going on there. Um, for Skyler, I suppose his list is 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 etched in stone. Um, I just don't. I just so. don't know. I don't think it's. I don't think it's the truth. Like I don't think it's a pure choice. If you're just gonna sit and worry about it and like go back and change it later, you know, okay. like it's not. You're starting you to sound committed. like. Uh, you're you starting to sound like someone who doesn't want to think about lists at all or something. Okay. Well, I. Yeah. Okay, don't open that can of worms. Let's we, we got to move on because we do have stuff to get to tonight. So, uh, guys, this is our like I said, this is our last podcast of the year. Um, tentatively speaking, like I said, we are going to be doing our on January 2nd, I think is the plan. We're going to do our 2024 preview show, which I guess is now just kind of our 20 our fantasy critic draft because we end up talking about a lot of games coming out that year in the course of doing our draft. So we'll do our draft on the second. We'll do our award show on the ninth. And then uh, those of us who are doing top 10 videos are going to be working on them and get them out in the month of January. So keep your eyes peeled for all of those things. And uh, if you want to hang out and talk about your favorite games of the year, jump into our Discord at discord.gg slash four player. And uh, yeah, enough about that. Let's get to it because tonight we're going to do a few impressions because, again, we haven't done a show in a while. There's a few news topics I want to just talk about, which... Again, guys, we're not really a news show, but there's some things that have happened in the past two weeks that it's kind of hard to ignore. Um, mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about those just briefly. Uh, and then in the second half of the show, I don't know what's going to happen with this, but we are going to kind of wrap up our fantasy critic of 2023. We're going to look at the we're going to look at the points. We're going to see who won, see who lost. And then we're going to kind of talk about what we want to change about it in 2024. And I think that's going to also kind of include maybe the community and how we can get the community more involved. So we're going to just kind of have those discussions and see where they take us. So hopefully we have a better idea of what that's going to look like next year uh, when we get there. So before we get into impressions, I want to get this new stuff out of the way. We're not a news podcast, but like I said, some big stuff has happened. And can one I... of which is... Oh, go ahead. Who cares about E3? Is it... Right? I mean, we've had we've had the we've had the 
the the in memoriam for E3 so many times now already. Wait, yeah, is that yeah. Wait, is that the story that E3 well, is canceled? There that is, is a story. That is a I would story, say yes. there's merit to it to an extent, Brad, in that it was a big deal. Yes, it has been dead uh, they keep unofficially keep for a little while. Unofficially. It's been a rich exactly. Um, but I, I would say it is a big deal because if you go back to 2000. 10 2012 like holy shit e3 there was nothing really else man like no, it was I, I the biggest yeah. shit in the fucking world for I, gamers i will not deny and, and, that. and and it will be looked back on um as some great experiences some great times we had some fun we met people we played games it was an adventure um and it, it, it is a big deal yeah um it is a big deal that uh you know it's gone do don't get me wrong um, it's been replaced by potentially some would say better things. Um, but you know what? Those things didn't exist when it was at its highlight. So, I mean, it was it was a big deal. All I'm I saying think... is I feel like we've had this conversation many You're times right. in the past several years. This which, which part, is why I don't want to spend a reminiscing of, part, which is why I don't really want to spend a lot of time talking about it. I just wanted to kind of pour one out and say, hey, it's officially dead now. Somehow, um, you know, E3 2019, which was the one right before the last one before COVID hit, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I remember thinking to myself after COVID hit, because, you know, I've said it a, long, a lot, like E3 for the longest time has been kind of the thing I look forward to every single year. And I was really sad because I was like, well, I'm not going to go to a fucking E3 event in the middle of COVID. And then COVID, you know, tapered off and 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 E3 was, they keep talking about E3 wanting to come back. And I was like, I just still don't think I'm comfortable going to this thing. And they kept canceling it. And somehow it's finally arrived. They've unplugged it from life support. And somehow I was at the last E3, <laughs> the last E3 so, to have ever existed. Yeah. Um, Part of this was me thinking that it already was official. No, 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 no. I mean, you're, you're right. There's well, no, no, no. They canceled it several times and then they passed it to a new, um, yeah, they, they, they tried to partner with Reed Pop to make it. The people that run Comic-Con couldn't make it happen or yeah, yeah, PAX yeah. or whoever they were. Um, that's when I knew, yeah, this is, it's yep. really, truly dead. It's dead. It's it's dead. Uh, and it, I think the, 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 the sad fact, the fact of the matter is now that it is, it is officially dead. It's, it's just like, sure. We have come up with other more convenient ways to um, like announce things and let publishers do their own thing. You know what I mean? But like, they do stuff I don't around think... the Keeley uh, event. Yeah. Now, but I don't, I don't, bigger. it's becoming bigger, but I, I just don't think it ever had it's, it's it's never garnered that much excitement or i think i think the know. point the the thing was it was a very consolidated release of a bunch of information it was a three-day four-day event where we got so many announcements and so many things and, and it, it was so many it like was so much we excited for yeah it was a celebration but now while all of those things still technically happen, they're spread out. They're in different places. They're uh, in which, you know, some may argue is better. Uh, yeah. You know, it, maybe it would suck it's that, Hey, ways. you announce your game and then it just gets squashed by all these other announcements. And it's like, well, fuck like, man, not, yeah. my game is not getting any attention because they announced the next like fucking God of war. And everyone's talking about that now. So I, 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 I like I said, I'm not saying, I'm upset. I'm not. I mean, you know, I'm just saying we can fondly remember. The I actually kind of liked the way it happened because I was really upset about when COVID was happening. And I was like, I'm not going to E3 for a while. I was like really upset about it. But the fact that it's like slowly tapered off and then now it's kind of just like, well, we're just going to take it off life support. I feel like I came to terms with it a long time ago. Yeah. Um, it, really, it, it, it just kind of sucks. I will forever cherish the fact that we've met so many people in our own community going to E3 and, you know, you know, Chai Tai, we have such a great relationship with Chai Tai, and we met him because he offered to put us up um, while we were in L.A. for the event and stuff, and I, I will forever cherish those moments. Mm. But that's all we need to say about it. It's dead. It's over. I promise you, Brad, we won't have this conversation again unless they <laughs> revitalize it and then kill it again, <laughs> which I don't think is going to happen. Announcing uh, but, E4. Yeah. <laughs> but they, um, there already was an E4. When E4. E, when E3 died like a decade ago. Yeah, I, you know, this is not the first time E3 has died. You're right. Um, so who knows? Anything could happen. If we live in a different world, so maybe it just needs to Over be dormant for a long down. time. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is, uh, and we've kind of seen the writing on the wall about this for a while. I don't think it was as obvious, but it was one of those things we've, we've talked about briefly is The Last of Us factions or online or whatever the fuck you want to call it. 
uh, has been, you know, they've been talking about it having problems and how they brought Bungie in. So when Sony bought Bungie, they were having Bungie go around and like kind of like uh, test the waters and see how everything is shaping up with all of their different multiplayer projects and whatnot. And there was some concern about the state of The Last of Us. Um, so the writing's kind of been on the wall, but this week they officially pulled the plug on it and that game is no longer happening. Uh, so I guess I just want to get reactions from you guys i haven't had a chance mm. to talk to anybody here about it mm. since it happened uh it really sucks yeah the biggest yeah. bullshit I'm, that's ever bullshitted i'm fucking <laughs> bummed and and the other part of it too is that like you know i don't really play destiny 2 that much anymore or these days but i still you know follow the people who talk about it and who are plugged into that community and everything right. and this idea that like Sony bought Bungie to help with like its live service games and was like maybe like their whole thing besides running Destiny and Marathon was going to be like to offer support for live service games. Right. And other which, was, so games, right? Gym, which was a Jim Ryan thing, right? Like that was kind of his initiative yeah, I guess um, so. at Sony. And now that he's gone, it kind of leaves me yeah. wondering like, well, are they and, like they're pivoting? Things aren't, good at, <laughs> things aren't good at Bungie. Like, yeah. this this could just as much be an issue of, like, well, they thought that Bungie was going to be able to support the development of this game, and they just can't. Like, yeah. so, yeah. like, this this might be just kind of, like, furthering a lot, like, like further proof to, like, a, a, a lot of, like, what's been, what people are talking about in the Bungie side of things, where, like, it's just bad. Like, shit's yeah, not like... good, and, like destiny 2 might be rolling up after the final shape and that a lot of shit is probably riding on marathon that yeah, like marathon it, is like yeah and to that up. point like marathon evidently had a play test with some uh some Extraction of the community people. and it went really badly Ooh. yeah they they asked them they asked the community members um, based on what you played, would you buy and stream Destiny tomorrow? And you mean marathon. Or, sorry, marathon tomorrow. They all said no. Ooh. Well, that's well. Yeah, you, to be honest, that's the whole point of doing that kind of thing. Like, you want to get that honesty. There's a little <laughs> you know more. I mean? to, yeah, there's there's a lot. There's there's a lot more to it. But like, but yeah, um, yeah. The whole the whole like Bungie as a live service support studio for Sony thing is seeming like a, a plan that is kind of blowing up yes. in everybody's face that's that's, yeah. that's inherently the problem is the live service part yeah. um not every fucking game needs to be games as a service um the last of us 100 percent should never have been everyone's trying to make the next Fortnite. Um, that hey if we just if we can just get this one thing going we're going to be raking in millions and billions of dollars but that's just not how it works don't get me wrong i'm not saying don't try um but i am saying don't take you know a beloved multiplayer game um waste years trying to make it something it never should have been and then just being like mm, never mind fuck y'all uh, and just we're 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 trashing the whole thing. I mean, this um, does feel like it got away from them in terms of scope. Yeah. No, it one hundred percent did, and I I would I would argue it's a bullshit excuse to say that we're worried our single player games are going to suffer uh, because of this. I mean, when it's their own it's their own fucking fault in the first place. They they took something that was small, unique, extremely well developed. Uh, had definitely uh, ways they earned money. They had seasonal content. They had stuff that they were putting out that you could spend real world money on and it could keep going. Um, they brought that into a future 10 years later uh, where it's so much easier to do multiplayer related things, to do seasonal content, to maybe have a new map or maybe a, a mode that changes over time and just have it be a straight up multiplayer game that would they have made billions on? No, um, but they could have easily made several million, um, yeah. uh, you know, um, a year if even. Um, and they're like, oh, well, you know, it's it, it would be too difficult to uh, to maintain this over time. Once again, I think they tried to fucking make, you know, a mountain when yeah. they should have been making some foothills. You know, um, uh, it, it's, it's just ridiculous that they 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 did this to themselves 
and the people who loved uh, the Last of Us factions are the ones who were going to suffer at the end of the day. Because, mm. you know, it sucks because now we don't have this project and they never they never put any time into making the, the fa factions work on The Last of Us Part 2. You know, it's one of those situations where I, I kind of feel like when we inevitably get Last of Us Part 3, they're going to, like, prioritize making sure factions is there at launch because of this whole thing, maybe. Um... I and, I wouldn't expect that at all, honestly. I think, you don't think this so? is this was their um, they, they pulled the ripcord. Now they never have to worry about multiplayer ever again. I mm -hmm. kind of want to call out the bullshit PR line about like, look, man, it was either this or we 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 it was either this or we become a multiplayer only studio. You know, we did it for you guys. Y'all want the single player games, right? We had to make this choice. That felt like very well worded PR to keep fans happy and i kind of hated it that was probably the thing that made me mad the most well I, mean, I know that's bullshit let me I mean, just say that for, for, from the other sorry on the other end of, of the spectrum here and i well i do agree with you that it is spin it is 100 percent spin I'm, i would be lying if i didn't say i had i personally had those concerns myself as someone who just doesn't really play multiplayer games yeah i didn't really want i never really wanted to see naughty dog focusing putting but, all their focus in a multiplayer here's game. the other thing nick you know you know who else didn't want that no one no one wanted mm. that nick not a single fucking okay. person in this world okay. i'm just letting you know okay. i'm just letting you know that as someone who's played factions mm, i don't know several hundred hours no one in the factions community wanted this game to be a games as a service that's not what they no, wanted they that. wanted factions too which would have been factions in the last of us 2 engine and those maps with some upgraded 2020 post 2020 mechanics and interactions and things like that. That's all it fucking needed to be. And they would have made a lot of money off of it yet. You're they right. tried to do something way more than they should have. And they were like, mm, oops, mm, that's our bad. Um, if we keep doing this, we're not going to make the last of us three. So we don't, y'all don't want that. So we're just going to cancel the whole thing. Like, and also fucking bullshit. And also like, I didn't, they spin up an entire fucking studio to remake the last of us part one. Like, what is yeah. that team doing? So I think I think the last why of Us couldn't part they have helped facilitate was, that? The the funny thing is I think they spun up that team to make the Last of Us remake part one so that they could have them focus on like smaller like side yes, projects correct. like, the, like the, Uncharted their Lost goal, Legacy and stuff like they that. They gave that they gave that team the Last of Us one as a proof of concept as a stepping off point for them to then the intention was never for them to continue on with last of us there that was a hey here's a proof of concept of essentially taking a game and making it run better on current hardware so now you have you're more familiar with the technologies and all of that so you can start working on other things that was you their know, goal i'm not going to say uh, i don't know, the, uh, the, you know the, i'm just going to say the last of us factions two what it should have been right never needed its own studio it never needed anything it needed a small core group of team to take the the mechanics and engine from last of us 2 and just insert multiplayer that's all it fucking needed. i agree i 100 percent agree but here and 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 but and we'll never really get the answer to this at least not anytime soon but like i i can't help but wonder how much of this was pressure from sony specifically with like because jim ryan's whole thing was by I forgot what he it was like by 2032 I want like 60 percent of Sony's catalog to be live service games yeah he is Fucking he is man. out and I and it sounds to me like they are doing damage control and trying to kind of like backpedal on Can that I, and I can't Can help I but wonder if this is getting is this if this is part of that backpedaling games as a service is a buzzword and it's one that everyone agrees that all gamers kind of hate right now. So them even saying that this is what this game was going to have to become. I don't even necessarily believe that. I feel like the project became bloated and too large because they kept trying to add in like single player stuff like story and characters, because anytime they talked about it, like after the original announcement, it was, it was them talking about that stuff. Like they, I think they, them saying like, like, look, man, we just didn't want to do games as a service. It's just another thing to make the gamers happy because every all these execs know that games as a service is unpopular right now. Again, this is the easy out for them. And I think that's why they they even are calling it that, you know, maybe it was just going to be a fucking uh, mul multiplayer game with a little bit of story. But like um, them saying games as a service, I again, I still think that's cleverly worded PR. This sucks. Yeah. It sucks. It, does. it yeah. sucks. I'm not even someone who plays multiplayer, but I, you know, I have friends who really, really love it. And, you know, 
it's part of I feel like part of the love for that original game isn't just the single player. It's that multiplayer. I think that's I mean, what it was a for a package, lot of people yeah. makes it literally one of the very best games ever made. And they, they, it was cool. I've seen it them. Caught. They, they do this shit all the time. They did it with Assassin's Creed. They did it with Ratchet and Clank. All, all the, they're always doing this shit where it's like, well, you know, the multiplayer, they, 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 they write, they, they come up with some bullshit excuse for why it's not worth it anymore. But like, man, it sucks you know like if any if any studio is getting <laughs> as much money as they want to do their games it's probably probably naughty dog i don't believe that they couldn't have you know, you know what really bothers me what really bothers right me is now. i feel like factions was something that was so like it wasn't like ignored completely but obviously it was not the reason people bought the last of us but the people who played it they knew they knew like this is amazing. And if more people played it, they knew they would know it was amazing. But I feel like with this new game being its own standalone thing coming out in a post last of us, HBO world, I think people would have finally been actually, I think this thing would have sold and I think it would have been popular. I think, I think more people would have ever got their hands on this than they ever did with the original factions. And it fucking sucks. But you're right. Oh, Bungie, you're right. Bungie said it sucked or something, which again, I don't believe any fucking thing anybody's saying at the top. It's just I mean, here's the here's the fact of the matter is when it comes to any anything, not even just this story, pretty much any story with the exception of like you get a studio like uh uh uh, uh Double Fine who's doing these like ridiculous like 30 30 hour documentaries about their process, right? You never like we're never going to get the truth like the like just no. flat out truth about anything in this industry from any studio surrounding any kind of event like this so it almost seems pointless to like talk about it <laughs> so you know what i mean well, um, i mean i mean this, this is this is a true but... pour one out moment i feel like you're right no no, no it, is. On this it is episode. this this truly We've Truly poured a, we've poured enough out for E3 <laughs> like four times. Let's pour one out for The Last of Us. I uh, I feel like the best case scenario here is that Naughty Dog repurposes a lot of the work and design they've already put into Factions Two into speeding up the production of Part Three. Because but you just otherwise, said there's going to be multiplayer in it. There's nothing, in my opinion, Chris Davis, to take what you said, remove a bunch of the games of the service bullshit out of it. And then now you have something that's more solid and more sustainable. You, you, you misunderstand me. What I'm saying is like the actual assets like art and design and Maps like and... level structure, character creation, things like that. And use that to speed up the production of part three. I mean, when, any, when anything like this happens, there's probably a I would imagine internally there is a scramble to like, OK, what can we keep? Yeah. And what can be purpose? Because yeah, if you could, obviously, don't, if you can avoid throwing stuff away and just throwing money in the trash, you're going to do it. Because because um, here's here's the greater problem, and we we touched on this before, is that Sony's entire plan for uh, their games and service catalog, um, it ain't in good shape right now. Um, the only other project that we know about that has been formally announced as a games and service title was Concord from Firewalk. Mm -hmm. And that was a 10 second cinematic teaser that told you fucking nothing. And when you actually look Ender it up, guess on. what it is? It's a PVP FPS. Like, mm. yeah, well, like we have a ton of those. What do you have to show for yourself? OK, well, we need to we do need to move on. But what I you know, we're going to obviously revisit this a lot because yeah. this is still super like not just the last of us thing, but just the kind of the aftermath of Jim Ryan's departure and like what Sony is trying to do, because I'm, sh it does seem like their plan, their like future forward plan is shifting in some way. I'm just, I'm so just thinking we're going to have to kind of wait and see how it I'm just out. kind of circling on the fact that I think that I think we're about to enter a period in which Sony releases are going to be kind of slim pickings for a while. I mean, well, it's... okay. I, I will, I'll straight up say it. We're not going to talk about the insomniac thing tonight. And I'm not going to go into any details, but there is a lot of information about where Sony is right now, including like the sales of all of their games in the past several years. So and it is yeah. kind of telling about like, oh, 
I expected this game to have sold a lot better or this game sold surprisingly well. It, and I think that stuff does kind of like help kind of create a narrative about maybe some of the decisions they're making in terms of like service games or not service games. Um, right. But again, look, look up at that stuff on your own time if you want. Uh, we're not going to talk about it. Tonight. I'm sure we will talk about those in some, to some extent on future shows, just not tonight. But anyways, we do have a lot to get to tonight. So before we get to the fantasy critic stuff, um, I, I, there's a couple games we haven't had a chance to talk about on the podcast. Um, uh, well, we these have... are new games. Yeah. Do you want to start um, us off, Brad? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you said a couple of games. I have a couple of games. Go for it. Okay. Um, which one should we start first with first? Chris, hit us up, Chris. Hit, get us with one, Chris Davis. How about that Bomb Rush Cyber Funk? Yeah, Bomb Rush Cyber Funk. This came out earlier this year, but um, it was a $40 digital game, and it was one that, it was just, you know, how this year's been, right? So oh, I was like, well, yes. I can't rent it yet. It finally, last week or whatever, uh, earlier this month, got a physical version. So I was able to finally... Uh, try it out and i'm glad i did I, it is one that even though i did not purchase day one because i don't know i had Baldur's gate at the time or whatever um it is one that i've been excited about i do like the jet set radio series if you're not familiar with bomb rush cyberfunk this is the 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 crowdfunded spiritual, spiritual successor uh w with the involvement of the original creator and the i mean it, it definitely captures jet set radio in fact it, if if you were to maybe like ask someone who is like somewhat familiar with like that series but doesn't doesn't really know what's going on in games, they might look at this and go, "Oh, this is this is a Jet Set Radio game, or Jet, this is Jet Set Radio Future." Like, it definitely has that vibe and that energy, and, and it's definitely its biggest strength. The actual developer is the Lethal League uh, studio. Are you familiar really? with Lethal League? Really? Mm -hmm. the, yeah they're the ones who they made a couple of lethal league games that those are like the fighting games that are also yeah. kind of like you're hitting a ball back and forth you mm -hmm. know we we we've streamed ball? it before yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I streamed a lot of lethal league when it was out yeah it was a good game I think, team, team reptile, reptile. Yeah. oh yeah yeah, yeah. So, i, I so had it, no it, idea and the thing wow. is like they so so the composer like so the Jet Set Radio series is like one of the things that it's most known for is its music. And they actually got like like some like collab involvement in the last Lethal League game. And, and I feel like like there's so the like style wise, they were already kind of like at you know, looking up to the Jet Set Radio series. So it makes sense that Team Reptile is the one that the ones that were, you know, crowdfunded this um uh, the spiritual successor. And and let me tell you, it really does kind of nail what is amazing about those games which first and foremost is the music is fucking like absolutely perfect like they okay. they nailed the jet set radio sound i absolutely adore the fucking soundtrack um and it is it is still like a very similar type of game where you're you know rollerblading around um but now you can um you have, there's a skateboard there's also a, a bmx bike so you even though you're still doing the same thing it's not just on uh inline skates which i guess was more popular when the the first jet set radio came out mm -hmm. um but it is still that you know kind of grinding around like big open city environments uh tagging things with you know you're doing your graffiti right uh while trying to like get higher up to like harder places like like that to me that was always sort of like the magic of those games is is even though it, it on the surface it kind of looked like a cell shaded tony hawk it was really more of like a platformer right it wasn't so much about you know getting some amazing combo although bomb rush cyber funk is more i feel like combo score focused than jet set radio the the two jet set radio games it is still very much about like how the fuck do I get up there? Because I, I I see that there's something I need to tag up there, but I have no idea how to get up there. And kind of like kind of crack downing your way up of really kind of figuring out the, observing the environment, figuring out how to get up on that thing so you can get up on that thing so you can get across over to the other thing to finally get what you're trying to reach your destination. And all that's here. It was it, it, like, it, it's, it's just as good in this game as it was in, in those other games, honestly. Has been a long time since I've played um, uh, even the second... Uh, jet set radio game but um was that first jet set radio game did it did that series debut on the dreamcast or was there it was a dreamcast one? game and the sequel came out for the original xbox when they mm. were doing a lot of 
kind of carryover of those Dreamcast IP. You know, a lot of the original Xbox, like stuff from Japan was was like from Smilebit and whatnot. It was Microsoft kind right. of going, hey, we're the <laughs> new Dreamcast, you know. Sega's <laughs> gone, but we're here. Um, so, um, but it's, it's good. It's good. Uh, it feels a lot more, like if you go back to those games, like the styles there, like vi- the visuals hold up because of the art style. The music, of course, holds up because it's fucking iconic, right? But control-wise, it's pretty clunky, like those old games. This yeah. game sort of takes like it, it modernizes it, but not so much. Like it, it's one of those ones where, oh, this is what I remember that old game kind of playing like, but it actually controls way better, more modern. You have a lot more control in the air. You have like an air dash and that makes it a lot easier to sort of extend your combos to find like the next railing to grind on or whatnot. Right. Like right. The, the first game was not that friendly. It, it was good, but it was definitely something you had to get used to. This feels immediately more pick up and play even though it's mm. not the thing you got to understand is you see me grinding a lot and whatnot which is very part of, much part of the series but this isn't like a tony hawk game i can't fall off of these rails you know like i i and, and when i do like manuals although i'm on this i'm on skates with this lady uh when i do like manuals or whatever to extend my trick from one like surface to the next i can't lose balance on those either like like this mm. isn't like a mechanically challenging game this is it, it really is just a platformer with mechanics that kind of look like Tony Hawk or whatever, and which is sort of what Jet Set Radio was. Um, it's just it's just a little bit easier to do that stuff now. But ultimately, this is a vibes e game, right? This is a game where you're just enjoying the look, you're enjoying all the different like graffiti uh art that you're unlocking and outfit, you know, palette swaps and just cool characters. And and you know, there's a story, but it is very like it's very Jet Set Radio. Um, Although I will say I was playing this in front of uh, Henry because I was like, well, there's no reason he can't watch me play this Jet Set Radio spiritual successor. It, but in the first like 15 minutes of this game, the story goes that you and your uh, buddies, like tag team buddies or whatever, tag team, um, graffiti artists. I don't know what you call mm-hmm. these people. Uh, anyways, you are like pulling some you're doing something and then all of a sudden the main character gets his head cut off like what? just decapitated he is decapitated oh, yeah. and when he comes back he has a robot head like a cyber head and part of the story is getting his head back and just that whole scene was a bit much for my six-year-old he was like what's going on here is that guy dead yeah it's yeah. um it was a like i made a mistake <laughs> but it's pretty lighthearted otherwise that I was just a lot decapitation. Just, for the first know. 15 minutes but i, I gotta stress enough you know, even like the graffiti kids. mechanics where where i'm like doing different like, for uh, kids up and down <laughs> with the analog stick and across to do like my graffiti all that's very easy to do you could just sort of spin the stick until you get you complete your your tag or whatever um really i'm just trying to i'm enjoying it as a vibey platformer trying to unlock outfits and music and stuff because you gotta unlock all the music because it's so good and they kind of nailed it. it. It's the thing where uh, this Nolan drafted this, right? And at first, yeah, yeah. like it, it sort of crawled back up to like a high seventies. And but if you go on like Steam, it's like like extremely overwhelmingly positive. It's like you know it, it is it is scored like a fucking Hades game because this game was made for a certain people and those and those people got exactly what they wanted and they nailed it. And, and the reason maybe why it's not getting like nines and tens is because it does feel a little Thank budget you. in places, but like, it looks nice, but you can tell that like, this is, it was a big project for the people who made lethal league, which was a, you know, side scrolling pixel art or hand drawn, whatever, like a uh, fighting game. This feels much bigger, but at the same time, it's like, well, there's no voice acting, which is fine, but there's also just a lot of like, you know, like, a lot of games would have a lot more sound effects in this cutscene, or even like this, mm. this in-game conversation that's happening or like um, when that, when a cutscene starts, you would think that like, Oh, well maybe this scene or this type of scene would have its own like track or they would change the song or whatever, but really they just sort of quiet, like the song that was playing in the background and then like, you know, lift it back up when the cutscene's over. It, it feels mm. very, like 
a little budget, but mostly just raw, like just kind of a simple, like they wanted to hit these three, like jet set radio pillars. And they did that and they didn't have much more money for, for the rest of it. Um, but that's kind of okay. Right. Because the original jet set radio wasn't that like deep or complex, Super of a polished game, or, you know. honestly, it was like sort of a style over substance in like maybe the best way. And, and that's why I feel like this seems okay. Like this is the perfect game at when at the end of the day you want to play a game and you really don't want to think and you just want to listen to some music like put this shit on you know it hmm. it's I will working this, for me. Uh, i've had a peek at some of the community top tens that have already been submitted and this game has already come up a few times yeah that's what i'm saying like this they nailed the assignment in a way that you know i have my doubts on for, honestly until this remember like nolan drafted this and like I feel like we didn't hear a peep about this until like it came out. And it's like, yeah. I was always wondering that shit's surely going to get delayed. No one's talking about this game, but no, it just came out and the people who played it adored it. And that's fine. That's good. Um, it's that game, man. And it's, that's not game. bitter about it at all. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> oh, he's not bitter. Uh, maybe it was at the time. I don't know. This is one of those games too. Like oh, I, kinda, no, I remember I mean, it existed in the back of my mind and then like, but I forgot about it in terms of like, it's coming out soon and it's something that's, that's perfectly draftable or, or, you know, it's, it's there to be picked up and I just completely forgot. Yeah. About it. And then all of a sudden, Oh, no one picked it up. Oh my God. That's, <laughs> I forgot. About yeah. It. And, and the only reason I didn't even consider it is because again, we had, I had, I thought for sure it would get delayed. Right. We just hadn't heard much about it. Yeah. Um, but it's here and it's pretty cool. And yeah, uh, also like Jet Set Radio, there's not much to the combat, but that's fine. It's a little bit better than it was in those games because honestly, in that especially in that first one, it was kind of it's tragic. exactly what it needed to be. It's it, it absolutely what it needed to be. And man, you know, hey, shoe in for soundtrack of the year. Let me tell you, boom. Shoot, uh, kicks ass. Um. All right. So I know, you, Brad, you have a second game you want to talk about, but sure. before you talk about that, can I? I'm gonna pass it over. We're gonna do a little back and forth here i want to pass it over to chris davis because yeah. he has a game that has been out for yeah, at this point like a month or so um and we haven't had a chance to talk about it yet but it's kind of a big deal um you've been playing through the super mario rpg remake yes i have which has been sitting on my shelf i can't even believe i picked that up i was like surely i'll find time to play that game well I it's have. not a long game it's maybe 15 hours maximum I've been um, playing Cyberpunk for like 90 hours, so well, that'll that'll do it to you. So <laughs> yeah. my history with the original Legend of the Seven Stars was I have I tried to play through that game over the course of nearly 30 years, like three or four times. And just I would always get to a point in which I would just be distracted or I'm under leveled, unprepared for a fight. And to get my ass kicked, I get upset or bored and I just drop it. Um, so this was my opportunity to finally set things right and see the fucking roll credits on this game. Let me tell me right now, before you continue, you've either done that already and you're about to tell us that you're super happy that it happened or you bounced off it again. Oh, uh, the number one, I rolled okay. credits on it over Thanksgiving. Really, really pleased with what I, what I got to experience. Um, this game is like, we haven't had that much in the way of like remakes from Nintendo, especially of oh. Mario stuff. Um, no. but this is an excellent one for them to start on. It is so authentic and so fucking fun. It seven star seven stars feels in retrospect, almost timeless, for just like the story they tell and the characters interactions and the adventure that, you go on. Was that original game? And cause again, I'm going to show my ignorance here. Cause I've actually never played legend of the seven stars. It's one of those gaping holes in my library, but like, was that original? Was that a paper Mario game? No, no. this was before no. paper Mario. Yeah. Okay. It's a very this, late super Nintendo game that was yes. developed by square soft square soft. Yeah. Correct. Not square Enix square soft. Like mm, yes. in 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 the era before Final Fantasy VII existed, they also made this game. Yeah, that's um, wild. But when yeah. I say it was very late, I didn't play like much 96. when it first came out because I already had my PlayStation. And let me tell mm -hmm. you, that that Mario game didn't look that cool, you know, compared to the sixty four was out. Even I think, right? Yeah, yeah, or I think it, was, it had just come out. out. Yeah. 
So Mario 64, I remember the conversations at the time. It was like people were talking about like Mario 64 and like Final Fantasy 7. And there were still people like chiming in about how awesome this game was. And I was like, well, no wonder a lot of people missed it, except maybe younger people who didn't have a PlayStation yet. Right. Was it a, was it a case um, of just poor timing? <laughs> it, I mean, it just came out. Really it. it happened. Yeah. I mean, it is a classic, well, right? It's considered yeah, a classic. Absolutely. Like, yeah. the, 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 the thing about. So, so I've always viewed it as like, real quick, uh, Mario RPG was released in North America. I'll say North America, May of 96, Mm, uh, Mario 64, September of 96. Exactly. Ah, And which means the marketing, we had already seen like a bunch of that game, I think, cause mm -hmm. maybe it it came out in Japan first even, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it just seemed like kind of dated at the, when it came out at the time. Yeah, but um, in in and in retrospect, I've always felt like some of the stuff that came after was just a little bit more like complex or a little bit funnier, or a little bit more interesting. But I don't know. I've had people tell me this is one that I've all, also always dabbled in. I've never actually finished. Um, people always tell me like this one is like the most like actual traditional RPG. So if you're kind of looking for that, maybe. Um, you know, you're kind of wandering around from town to town and stuff more so than those um, other uh, Mario RPGs of the different. Mm-hmm. Especially when you start getting games. into like the like the more recent like the pa- like the, the Paper Mario well, RPGs that have come those. out because those are like those are so good but they're so long and I just I feel yeah. like they 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 wear you out bef- long before you get to the credits but it sounds like that's not the case here. Yeah, no, that it definitely doesn't do that here. Um, again, this is maybe 15 hours, probably maximum. Um, and that's with you going back and doing a lot of the side content. Like, I probably spent an hour alone just replaying over and over again Booster's Hill. Not only because I love that track, but it's a very fun minigame. Um, so so you, don't, you don't have a ton of nostalgia for this because you never played it, finished it back then, or played it much back then, right? I The, the furthest I got in a run was I got back to the castle um, and I was attacking the giant sword. And for okay. some reason, I guess I just was, was underpowered, underleveled for that. And I could never beat it. So sure. Uh, but the thing, the thing about this is I've always felt like, well, this is going to come out. People are going to happy, be happy. But that's because people have so much nostalgia for this. I feel like this is mm-hmm. a very big Which nostalgia. Game. A so someone who, who, who finished it for the first time. Is it like, is it? Like, does it, is this like a big recommend? I mean, does it hold up? Do you recommend people go out and buy it? I mean, um, is it better in some ways than Mario and Luigi, like Superstar Saga or Paper Zero Super Sky Paper specifically Mario wants or? to know if you Not think Super. after playing this, if there's, if, 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 would you say there's any point in going back to that original? I mean, it's kind of like very oh, interesting. Well, the original is kind of ugly. I mean, I, I wouldn't recommend going back and playing the original, original game in comparison because it's basically this. It's yeah. this is 100 the percent the same one. thing, except that it's 16 nine with with better graphics and expanded music like there's there is relative except for one thing. There is no exclusive content really for this remake. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, the one thing is actually pretty beneficial, beneficial to the formula because it's uh, you see the that 100 percent wheel in the corner there. Yeah, yeah. That is your active uh, ultimate gauge, which you did not have in the original game. So was it? You, just, was it? Was it? Did it still exist? You just couldn't see it. Like you could. No, it did not exist. Oh. It was not something in the original game. So you would, in this remake, you build up combos uh, of building up your gauge by timing your your attacks and your blocks. You build up uh, that in enough of a cadence in which it increases both your power as well as the the rate in which you get points in the gauge. And when you have mm-hmm. the full gauge, uh, depending on which party members you have on the battlefield at the time, which you can, by the way, freely swap out with the exception of Mario. Mario always has to be in the battlefield, but everyone else can be swapped out whenever you want. Mm. Um, Shitty is a dang situation. And so uh, whatever combination you have sure. has a different <laughs> ultimate attack. Uh, against the enemy or bo- boost yourself, things like that. Um, and I'll and I'll show that a little bit later in the footage if we get to it. Uh, but other than that, like no, I really would recommend going back and playing the original. Um, if you intend to, at, if you want to indulge in Super Mario RPG, um, 
just go with this one. Just do it. Uh, it's pretty and, solid. And, and it's it's so fucking charming, man. Like the the writing and just like the the character interaction feels fucking timeless. Um you the the the, the combat rhythm of blocking and, and timing your uh, button presses for attacks to do extra damage or even do uh, damage to every other enemy in a single attack, like feels really good. Um, it's just really a fantastic update. Uh, nice. I, I, I kind of, I, I, I adore this game. I'm glad, is, I'm glad somebody made time for it because it was one of those things. It's one of those games that I, I, I do think was, you know, kind of a big deal. And I, it's, it's one of those years where something like this in a lot of other years probably would have been a much bigger deal but it kind of got drowned out i think um, oh like this will probably sell extraordinarily well i wouldn't know oh, that i have no doubt I, i'm just talking about like in terms of coverage like i i i don't hear it being talked about a ton on like yeah, podcasts be, and whatnot. because it's, it's so, so much to talk about right now it's so faithful i feel like if they did yeah. more to like make it make new, it besides a couple out, of battle yeah. mechanics people would be talking about it more but it's like it's a prettier mario rpg you know oh, so here's a, a question very, that was a very this has to do with our game of the year stuff because I, I spent a lot of time today as I was preparing our community uh, game of the year poll, right? To like kind of write out to tweak the rules from last year and talk about like the, here's the how eligibility works and stuff. And one of the things I put on there was about the difference between superficial remakes and like and you know full on like you know when you think about something like Dead Space, the Dead Space remake or the Resident Evil Four remake versus something like the yeah. Metroid Prime remaster. What category it, does this fall into? You think because it is all it new. Remake. It's all new this assets. This is drafted. Right? The, the, this was they called it a remake, so it's it's considered a remake, right? Yes. And like I, mean, I feel right. like it is. It's if, all new if assets, Metroid so. Prime Remaster was called Metroid Prime Remake, we would have considered it a remake as well. Because honestly, that update was like just as big as this one. No, you're right. For well, here's Prime. the thing, and, and here's the distinction I was trying to make for anybody who's still thinking about their list at home. This is kind of what I was trying to get at is because. The, the difference between like the Metroid Prime remaster and something like this is the Metroid Prime remaster was like they've basically just taken the existing assets and like up res them and clean them up a lot and repurpose them and to make them look nicer. With this, though, you can tell right from the get go, they've they've it's even though it's a one to one remake, they've redone all the assets. Everything is a completely new art style, like a lot of work had to went into making it a new thing, even though it is kind of a one to one. This is one of those ones that kind of like falls in the weird, like in between those two categories, I think. But yeah, you're right. It's, it's like it was the draftable. Advance Wars uh, remake that came out earlier. Yeah. This year. Right, 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 right. Just um, new art, same bones. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to say about this, Chris Davis? Or I just wholehearted endorsement. Fucking fantastic. Um, you haven't said I've the never... word delightful yet, which I find surprising. Say it. Say it. I oh I thought I already said it's fucking delightful. It is fucking delightful. Like I don't understand how anyone who is a Mario fan wouldn't want to play this. Like it's okay, okay. You know, some of us just like jumping challenges and stuff, not talking to turtles or whatever. Mario is not just Mario. a fucking platformer. I would argue that there's more fucking non-platformer Mario games than there are fucking platformers. Yeah, but I'm... the best ones are athletic games, Mario games. That's what Miyamoto used to call driving a car or, or no, no, that's what like I was watching a thing about the history of Mario and that's what Miyamoto used to call his type of game back in the day when he was athletic inventing Mario games. was they were athletic games because it was all about like running and jumping. What? That's that's kind of amazing. They didn't have the term platformer yet. Yeah, man. Hmm. Fantastic. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Glad you found time for this, Chris Davis. Uh, it's it looks delightful. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Before Speaking we of delightful, let, let's let's do my other game real quick. Yep. That's where I was going. Oh, and then we're going to oh, we're going to take a break and we're going to do fancy critic. But mm. take it away, Brad. This, this is a weird of one. a delightful <laughs> platformer character. I don't know. Uh, I've been playing Pizza Tower, which this game came out very early in the year. <laughs> Yeah, Speaking very of nuts. indie uh, homages, spiritual successors, sort of even. What is this um, an homage to? To other a things. Warrior I'll land. tell you in a second. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he said it. This is a uh, long in development, sort of a spiritual successor to the Wario Land games. I would say it's most like, say, Wario Land 4. 
uh, and that's because of a certain mechanic that I, I'm pretty sure only four did. Uh, if you're not t- too familiar with the Warrior Land games, they're they're platformers where you're Wario. In, in like <laughs> in the 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 thing about Wario in those games is that he doesn't really like he's not like Mario. He doesn't in most of them he doesn't really get hurt. He just gets yeah. sort of things happen to him, and and that sort of plays into like the changes in like platforming and navigation or puzzle solving or whatever um like he gets smushed and all of a sudden now he can again they're all a little bit different uh pizza tower is i say now that i think about it, definitely like a wario land four like in that you're going through uh a level very fast and once you get to the end of it you now have to run back through the stage as fast as you can uh at breakneck speed uh before the timer runs out it's one of those uh. And I'm pretty sure Warland 4 was the only one that had that specific mechanic. And this does that. Uh, the thing about Pizza Tower, which, you know, <laughs> b- blow up your uh, your streams so you can get a look at this thing. It is wild looking. It but is. This is very crazy animated. You know, it's very kind of like Ren and Stimpy where it's like just yeah, strange. That's exactly gross. what I was going to say. Strange or gross or goofy. It just looks insane. Just absolute insanity. And and there was a Wario platformer that came out. I think it was on the Wii or something. Maybe even like Wii download. The, there was a Wario platformer that had like a crazier, like hand drawn art style, but it's definitely not one of like the loved WarioWare platformers. I, I can't even remember. It what wasn't it was Wario World, you thinking of? No, no, no. Wario World was a mm-hmm. 3D platformer. Th- this was a side scrolling Wario platformer for like the Wii that had like a crazier, more animated art style. And I'm wondering if that was also, was it Shake It? Shake there it, was Wario Shake It. Sha- that Wario was Land, on the it? Wii in 2008. Okay. And maybe that's what I'm thinking of. And that had a more like elaborate hand-drawn art style. So maybe, maybe that's also part of the inspiration for why this goes so hard with like the animations or whatnot. But this ga- playing this game is just absolute insanity. First of all, like mechanically, it is super deep. Like it, it feels like... Uh, Gosh, uh, the the influence in terms of the influences in terms of like the depth of mechanics. Um, I think of a lot of things, but like, but one of the things specifically that that is very reminiscent to me is of like the the shine spark stuff that like Samus does in like the two D Metroid games, mm-hmm. where she goes, she starts running full blast, and then she you know crouches to like hold the charge and now all of a sudden she can like fly up and like cancel that and like continue that like if you play metroid dread you know exactly what i'm referring to i mean i guess that's the most recent touchstone with that stuff like a lot of like those kinds of mechanics are in here as well so like mechanically it's like this very like satisfying platformer that immediately feels like it has a really high skill ceiling and Hmm. and you know at the end of a stage you know you get you get like, you know, scores and you have like, there's a combo meter and everything. And, and even though when I'm playing, it's just, it feels like absolute insanity. It, it definitely seems like the kind of game that like I could get really good at and, and like, you know, get through an entire stage in, in a single like combo or whatever, where you're just chaining together these crazy fucking moves. Because one of the things that this game does is when you, I, I, I'm not, I, I wouldn't say I'm not, I don't, I wouldn't say I'm early in the game, but there's a lot, I feel like there's a lot to this game and the way I'm playing through these levels, it, they feel like levels that you want to play over and over again. And I haven't really gotten to that point yet, but one of the things that I've noticed is that when you run back through the whole stage, when you get to the end of it, before the timer runs out, you can, you can trigger a portal that lets you do it again. That like loops the, the run back through the stage. So if you're going fast enough and like you're doing good enough, you can try to run through the entire stage backwards, like a second time for even like more points or more score. And, and it's just, it's just, it's absolute insanity. Well, I'm saying insanity, not just because of like the crazy animations and moves and stuff, but like the actual like level design is like super bizarre. In Wario, I, I feel like it was always a little like, you know, like, oh, he gets smushed and now he's, he's just smushed kick Wario. You? Yeah, this, these cows keep kicking me. It was like this mechanic was introduced for this level. And I'm like, this is fucking insane. It's mostly just annoying. But like, it wasn't till I'm running back through the level with a timer that I'm all, all, all of a sudden I'm like, really have a hatred for these cows now and i get it it's very funny like this is an extremely funny game by the way just like all the little animations and like i like the guy that throws the chicken wings at you or like the fried chicken and you like eat them and then all of a sudden you like burp fire and then 
It's like having so, a so, scar so that, that's Mario. an example of what I'm talking about, right? Where yeah. that's one of these power ups that like it doesn't seem like a power up. It sounds like it seems like this enemy just did this horrible thing to you. Now I can't I don't have any of my mechanics, but all of a sudden this part portion of the level is designed around this quote unquote power up that's not a power up. It's like an impairment, but you have to have this, you know. You have this to be a flaming mouth to be able to get way. through this portion of the stage. And then and then the level design is like, oh, like now it's trying to help me get rid of this impairment so I can't get all these secrets. I need to make sure I'm not hitting any of these cows or whatever so I don't have to <coughs> go back and get this quote unquote anti power up. Um, there's really clever level design in that way. Um, and it's wild. Like, like some of those power ups are just absolute insanity. Like me getting like a fire breath from eating a hot pepper that a guy threw at me is like one of the more like normal tame power-ups that I got earlier in the game. I got this, it's just a random power-up that turns me into like a sword wielding knight that can't do anything but move forward. And it just seemed insane at first. Like I didn't even know what was happening, but then I started to see how the level design was like very cleverly designed around it. And I mean, look, I know it's late in the year, <laughs> <laughs> this, game is, this game is kind of extraordinary it's a force of nature and i feel like it's something that i, I know i've said this once already tonight but again having looked at the first few top 10 lists that have been submitted by the community i saw this oh. game pop up several times and also shockingly high on those lists too. this is, at first, this is another like, one this is another one that i feel like was kind of not given maybe like a bomb rush not given like a lot of time of day by like your traditional games press or whatever, but like the fans of it are, yeah, like King Carry and Chat said, this is his number two of the year in a in a year like twenty twenty three. Let me tell you, is a lot. Um, yeah, it's kind of um, it's kind of remarkable to be honest. Um, honestly, I can't wait to play more. I'm looking at this and I just want to get back to it just because just absolute chaos, distilled well, chaos, pure. You're gonna have to wait, Brad. Platforming joy and chaos um well i'm having more fun with this than i honestly than i've had with any of those wario where i mean not wario land platformers which were cool but you know a, a little bit clunkier Th this is like made by someone who knows what they're doing when it comes to like platform mechanic mechanics and it seems really cool it's it's one that i really want to get good at but i'm I, i'm just so happy when i could just get to the end of a stage because <laughs> it's crazy it's crazy um yeah. well i did have a really nice smooth music, transition into fantasy critic really and the, then you then you sh you shot it to shit um well that's fine so i can talk about my game real quick oh, you have a game i'm just not I'm playing the pokemon uh dlc oh, oh damn you Man, what do you mean oh. i tried i tried to ping you on yeah. against the storm you gotta play i mean against the storm Dude, okay like i'm just playing that in the last week against Against the Storm is very much on my to-do, along with 48 other games that came out this year. Yeah. Um, I do want to play Against the Storm. Everything I've seen of it, it looks really good. Um, I, cool. I definitely want to. Uh, but I, I have been playing uh, the uh, the Pokemon uh, Indigo Disc uh, Area Zero, whatever they call it, DLC Part 2 uh, that just came out. Uh, pretty good. Um, they've still not fixed the frame rate. It's still horrible. <laughs> <laughs> um that's the only the the biggest downside of it and it's still a frustration that game freak can't put out a a game that runs well this is, this is an expansion to to scarlet and violet scarlet and violet okay yeah um so the 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 first part came out a few months ago uh this is the second part of that dlc uh that just came out story's pretty good they added a bunch of new not new pokemon but uh pokemon we've seen before that haven't been in the game um, including like 25 legendaries and stuff. So I don't know, it, it's been it's been enjoyable. I've been playing it with some of the community members uh, nice. as well, um, enjoying my time with it. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, Crispy, did you have any uh, quick mentions you wanted to throw in there? This is your last chance to mention Man, the video game in 2023. You know, <laughs> I've been fucking scrambling. I've been scrambling the last week or two, just kind of like picked up a bunch of little things. Played a, bu a bit more Vampire Survivor, which is kind of <laughs> cool. Unlocked some new characters. Um, Against the Storm was one of the games that I went back to and played a few hours. And that game is pretty sick. Like, it's actually really cool. Um, the one I was looking at that I'm really... Uh, 
kind of excited about is Satisfactory. Oh, they that's just put out so long. They just put out update update eight, and I think they're like I think they're getting pretty close to hitting one point oh. I still and can't believe that game's not one point It's wild. It like this. Yeah. It it's kind of crazy. Like what you can do in that game now. Like it's. I have a feeling that's going to be one of those games when it does come out of early access. It's going to be super fucking polished. Well, interesting, you say that. We'll have a conversation about, later about our fantasy critic and whether we're going to allow early access to 1.0 releases for next year. Yeah, that's going to be something. True. That is going to be part of the conversation for sure. Crispy, did you uh, finish Baldur's Gate three? <laughs> What is wow. finish? What is Has anyone finish? Roll credits. Gate so Chris here's the thing, did. man. I started a new playthrough. <laughs> Before finishing your first one? <laughs> I uh, that was one. that was one of the things that I did this last week is I started my my Vengeance Paladin playthrough. <laughs> and like already I you know, like at first I was a little like, man, I don't know. Like I went over this game with a fine tooth comb. I feel like I had my experience. Like, is this just gonna feel weird going back and trying to inhabit another character? I nope. I built this character, I started playing as him. I was very much like, okay, this isn't the roguey warlock I was playing before. This is like a fucking paladin, and like let me tell you. Mm, it's so magical like it's so, <laughs> like like just like i mean like as soon as i started finding the voice of the character i was like yep here we are okay yep we're, we're back in who am i who am i sleeping with this time like Boom. i i even made sure to get the fucking the flame brand sword or whatever it's called from the mm. from the nautiloid yeah. ship from the yeah. from the cambion guy um, so, bad, so, now, about that so now I have a, now I got like my paladin with like a fucking bitch and great sword that's probably going to mm-hmm. take me through the first like six or seven levels like yeah. man if I, yeah. I sometimes I, a special I, game I, sometimes I find myself wondering if I ever get around to playing a, a, a second character in that game will I will I not brutally Dude, murder I think that it's, cute little I think bard. it's insane <laughs> I think it's insane that you're going to put that game as like your number one game of the year. And the only experience you've had with it is playing as the dark urge. Like that's, I mean, here's the thing. I I will say this. My dark that's urge so, uh... has not cropped up as much as I have expected it to yet. The, the biggest thing that's happened so far has wow. been brutally murdering that bard and getting that, uh, devilish looking, uh, butler weasel devil dude that follows me around occasionally wait uh, the bard as in the the outlandish british dude that hangs out with you no 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 no, 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 no. the uh the cute little elf is she, is she an elf uh, no, I, she's I only a knew her for tiefling. Like, no she's a tiefling, tiefling. yeah, 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 yeah tiefling. The, the tiefling bard i knew her for like alfira is her alfira. name Nick wow. I just, dude i knew her for all of 45 seconds before she was dead i had one conversation with her Went to my mm. sleeping bag, laid down, and the next thing I know, I was brutally stabbing her. And that was it. She was gone. <laughs> out of my game. So, uh, with that in mind... Uh, I'm gonna be faded into darkness, and I let I'm the archangels see I'm, yeah, I'm about to have my 10-day vacation here shortly, and like I said, like I've been saying for a long time, I'm going to be focusing pretty heavily on Baldur's Gate 3 during that that vacation, so I'm very much looking forward to that. I you might get to act two. That's great. I will... Uh, wait, what? You no, might no, no, get yeah. to act two. Again, oh, again, I, I need to. Oh, yeah, I'm almost to act two. I'm just saying I have I have not I'm not beating around the bush at all here. I've been very clear about the fact that I have no intention or expectation that I will finish this game or even get to Are act three before the end the of the underdark year. Yet? Yes, I have been to the underdark. Um, Did I'm you see very... the forge? OK, we can't just keep asking me if I've done okay. <laughs> what I've done, what I haven't done. We can make um, an entire podcast episode of just yes. asking Nick what he's done. Yes, you did could. You, uh, did you it. see that one thing? Uh, pretty cool. Just fuck up. Um, <laughs> I will say, um, I have been spending an absorbent amount of time playing Cyberpunk 2077. It, the game's fucking incredible, and I started Phantom Liberty last night, finally. That game, that DLC, that expansion, kicks off with a fucking bang, and it is super exciting. Um, man, that game is that game's pretty magical now. Like, wow. That's all I, I, I want to say about it. Uh, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. I can't, like wh- what a turnaround. Um, but yeah, that that's it. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, I don't have any more short mention, quick mentions because that's really all I've been spending my time with lately. So, with that said, uh, again, 
We're going to go ahead and wrap up impressions here. We're going to cut the segment, and we're going to when we come back, we're going to talk about Fantasy Critic. Now, I want to be very clear before we cut the break. If you're listening to this at home, you have now heard the last of the regular four-player podcast conversations you're going to hear in 2023. Because when we come back, we're going to we're going to look back at the year in Fantasy Critic. We're going to look at the we're going to look at the points. We're going to look at the rosters, and then we're going to talk about what we're going to do in 2024. And a lot of it is going to be honest is going to be just us figuring shit out. We're going to be hashing stuff out. Um, it'll be and we're gonna, it'll, it'll be interesting. And if you're if you've been having fun following along, or if you're maybe perhaps interested in have, participating in some way, maybe stick around because we're going to talk about possibilities there too. So that when we get to our our 2024 draft on January 2nd, hopefully, um, we're going to have a whole new set of of of, of kind of rules to, to or ways to think about it. So um, stick around for that. But First, we're going to take a short break. So if you're watching us live or listening at home, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back, everybody. The time has come. Uh, I can't believe it's been almost a whole year since we did our initial draft back in January for our Fantasy Critic League, which is, again, this is our first time ever doing this. Um, and if you've been following along, you've obviously heard us talk about Fantasy Critic a lot over the year. Um, we've been very active about it in Discord. Um, and I think, <laughs> so in a second, I'm going to kind of go over where we ended the year. But what we're going to do tonight is, aside from kind of looking back on the year we've just had, we're going to talk about how we can maybe improve and how we can make it a little more interesting maybe next year. Um, and uh, and those are the kind of we haven't really we've talked about ideas here and there, but we haven't had a chance to like really kind of talk it out and hash out the specifics. And gonna, that's kind of what we're going to do. Think, I think the main thing we need to do is hash out the rules that everyone's like OK with before we start our, our draft in a couple of weeks. Yes, because the, the, because the thing we kept saying throughout the year was that. Well, that's an interesting idea, but we we literally can't do well, since we've already started like we've already done our draft and people have already like picked up <laughs> games. We can't make any changes as while it's in progress. Like we, it, it has to wait till next year. So now is the time to figure, to figure out that what shit we're okay out. with and set it in stone before we start. And also, this first year doing this is obviously it was our first time doing it anything like this. So it, this was very much a learning experience, um, and we want to make we want to you know, learn as much as we can from this past year and, and hopefully use that information to make next year bigger, better, more fun. Um, so that's what we're going to do. And we've actually, we, we contemplated maybe even having this conversation completely off the podcast, but you know, we have, a, I think we have our best conversations here on the show and for the most part, y'all seem to enjoy it. So we're just going to, we're going to fuck it. We're doing it live. That so, didn't, that didn't, you know, we're going to try to have community involvement this year. Um, yes. Community league specifically. So Right. People need to hear about it. So before we get into hashing out those specifics, I want to revisit uh, where we ended up. And 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 I'd say at this point, everything is pretty much final. So, There's... Go ahead. So I will say, as far as like what's final and what's not, at the very least, from... I mean, if you do the, the math, I, unless Silk Song drops... In the next couple of weeks like first place is going to be first place and last place is going to be last place yeah i don't think it, i don't think anything's going to move well i mean it much. could right i mean i mean like stuff can happen with late reviews like i had some shenanigans with like war tales right like like stuff can happen but mathematically first is first and last is last and less six six long draw so let's do that real quick let's just kind of see where we ended up right so yes. uh you know, I'm not going to go through a ton. We're going to kind of cover a lot of the rules again when we're talking about the stuff here in a minute. So I'm not going to waste much time there. And also, we'll kind of revisit some of this stuff and how it's supposed to work in January when we do the draft. But there's six of us participating this year, Carlos included. Carlos is not here, obviously. I hope maybe he's in chat. I haven't really seen him. But um, we had six of us. We had, I think, when we drafted at the beginning of the year, we each drafted, was it 10? I think so. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I think it was so, 10 games. So and, and I, yeah. Sorry. It go was, 
So so we drafted ten games and we did two um, counter picks. Counter picks, right? And and then the rest of our the rest of our um, was bids. Uh, yes. Okay. So continue, continue. There's so there's here's where we here's there. where we ended up. We and, and like Brad said, unless something dramatic happens in the next two weeks, this is probably where everything is going to kind of shake out. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. We drafted eight games. Okay, eight picks. games, two counter two picks. Counter picks. <laughs> That's what it was. Okay. Um, and then the rest were pickups throughout the year. So Nolan, I'm gonna, I'm going to kind of go in the order we drafted everything because that's just kind of the way it's presented here. Nolan, you ended up with 144 points. Now you don't you. There is a game that you drafted. You picked up recently called Tape to Tape, which has not released yet, and I'm not sure Correct. if it's still expected to release this month. But it's running out of time. But maybe it'll still drop. But even then, in order for that to really make a difference, you would probably you would have to somehow pull in 30 points. It, it would have to be <laughs> a it have it would have to be a 95. Yeah, it would um, have to be a 95. And there were only two of those this year, really, and that's that was yeah. obviously Tears of the Kingdom and Baldur's Gate Three. Was that the um, hockey RPG? Yes. Correct. Yeah, well, okay. Hockey okay. Roguelike. Yeah, it was literally but yes. a hockey game, not an RPG, but it's yeah, a correct. Game. Yes, it is a hockey yeah. game. Yeah. I will be interested to see what happens if that if that does end up dropping uh, this yeah, year. Yeah. So so yeah, with the way Open Critic works, it's it's very unlikely that it's even going to get a score, even if it does drop. But it is because of the way they do it. It has to be three top reviews. It could be like a 10, a 9, and a 9.5, or like a, 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 a 5, a 4.5, and a, and a 9. Case in point. Case in point. If you, if you bounce over to the next one, which is my list, um, I ended up with 124 points. Um, and my, one of my most recent pickups was Blood West. And that only has four reviews, and it's sitting at an eighty-seven. So obviously not quite as yeah. as extreme as as you're uh, suggesting here, but like you were saying, illustrating, it only got four reviews that qualify because a, a reviews start to slow down dramatically in December, right? Anything that gets released in December is just reviews That's aren't really priority. It it so, took it took like like three, four, maybe even five days for even the most recent Dragon Quest Monsters game to even get an open critic. Score, yeah. or even a page for a while it was it's been absurd yeah my last one was People my last pickup was it. cookie cutter and that only that took a few days to get reviews and a page and everything but it finally pulled in some points not a lot but it pulled in some points so yeah i've been I hearing about that. that that seems to be kind of a looks pretty, pretty cool looks pretty cool um so i just want to point out on my list uh i have a, i have a goose egg because silent hill 2 didn't drop this year um and I think everything everything's kind of pointing to like March or April or something of next year. So I'm going to have to take the loss on that one. And then my last counter pick, which hasn't registered yet, is Routine. I don't think Routine's going to drop in the next two weeks. <laughs> so that's pretty good. Dare to live the dream, Nick. Dare to live the dream. So I ended up at 124 points, which I'm going to be honest. For the last six months, I assumed I was losing this thing. I, was, I assumed I was going to come in sixth place. It turns out I did not. I did not come in last because uh, Chris did. Davis... You ended up at 109. Uh, no, I did not. No, I did no, not. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Every time I look at Carlos, I think it's oh, you. Carlos it's... got 109. He has such mid taste. Oh my god! <laughs> well, his, his number That's one so draft pick. So embarrassing. His number one draft pick, which didn't come out, was a game that was going to be like super highly rated. So. Oh yeah. my yeah. god! But, but the thing he is, should just go into exile. He could have dropped it, but. If Hollow Knight Silk Song came out, I think Carlos would have been second that, or third was, place. And that's what, th that's what mm. happened to me, too, was was multiple games that I had drafted that probably would have rated fairly high got delayed. And so when those delays don't happen until later in the year, well, it's like, what what the fuck am I supposed to pick up? Yeah. Um, so, and something and that's probably, probably, probably not maybe. problematic. Maybe we should talk about that in terms of... And, you know, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but yeah. you know, Let's December makes the... things kind of weird. So, um, let's, and then let's okay. speed through this wrap. wrap yeah, up, yeah. I guess, so, longer. Chris Davis, you ended up with 116 points. Yes. Um, so actually, Carl. Okay. So by the rules that we established at the beginning of the year, which is kind of the 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 stakes, right? The stakes that we established. Uh, Chris Davis, or sorry, God damn it, not Chris Davis. Carlos, whose team... I'm only getting this confused because Carlos's team name is Chris Davis was right. So I see Chris Davis and I immediately think, oh, this is Chris Davis's list every time. Okay. Yeah, we, uh, we, we figured it out in January, Nick. Come on. Right, I know. <laughs> Shut up. 
this is for the listeners' benefit. But we said whoever gets last place has to stream the worst rated game on their list. And I'm trying to see what that it's would Exo be. Primal. It's Exo, Exo Primal. Primal. Yes, yeah. Unless it's going to stream Exo Primal. <laughs> it's, like, it's on Game Pass at least. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Right. He, so, he uh, says that he's going to like. Um, kill himself so he doesn't have to stream it <laughs> something absurd do it like on that. stream you fucking he's gonna, coward he's gonna you try won't. to get out of it and we're not gonna let him so he ain't so gonna there kill is, himself <laughs> there he's is, a there coward is the, there is Jesus something Christ. to be said about like we need to he needs to honor that right be, because if we yeah. one thing we screwed up with and this goes for like the winnings as well right I don't think you're supposed to do like a pot based thing without collecting money at the beginning of the year. <laughs> but yeah, I, it's true. You know, what's your point? I, we'll, well talk, we we'll even, talk about it. We need to talk about what we're even going to do. We're going to do things. We're going to do a lot of things differently in 2024. So we'll talk. Okay. About so it. Let, let, let's get through all the numbers here real quick. Yeah, I'm, I'm working. I'm just, I'm, let, me, let me work. Let me cook. Okay. Let me cook. Okay. Uh, Brad, your final count, putting you at first place was 172 points. Fucking Baldur's Gate, Day of the Diver, damn you. Damn you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look. The Dead Space remake sh- pulled in a shocking it, amount for you. <laughs> look, Baldur's Gate, we, we all know Baldur's Gate 3 overperformed more than anyone expected. I'm giving yeah. a lot of credit to that. Yeah, that's fair. But there's a reason I wanted it number one in my draft, because I had a feeling in a post-Divinity Original Sin 2 world, it was going to do really well. Just, right. yeah. All I right. knew and that well. And lastly, uh, Crispy, you pulled in 138 points, which is pretty good. Respectable. Uh, pretty good. Middle yeah. of the pack. This is a yep. guy who knows video games but still has a fucking life. <laughs> wow. Wow, Crispy. Damn. <laughs> yet yet he, he counterpicks sure wins like Mortal Kombat 12. Uh, oh, yeah. You're, don't. Oh, don't, don't revisionist do history, Chris Davis. <laughs> revisionist history because you know goddamn well that first of all, the game's not called Mortal Kombat 12. It's called Mortal Kombat 1. And who could have fucking guessed that you found a goddamn monkey's paw somewhere <laughs> and gave up your testicles for a fucking uh, a goddamn like like moonshot of a fucking game release? It's still it's still a, it's still a bad third round pick. Also, as a as, yeah, as awful a, third round pick. As awful a rem- third round pick. Third round pick. is not bad. No. Awful. That does not matter. Awful that the ends you don't justify the that. means. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> are Mr. Magoo fucking like walking over <laughs> about to step the into a goddamn don't know open who Mr. Magoo hole. is, Chris. Huh? The children don't do, know who Mr. Magoo so, is. So, okay, well he's so, a dumb idiot who does things but doesn't experience any consequences because the universe favors him. <laughs> so that's uh that's Mr. All Magoo. Right. All right. So, uh, uh, so that that that's the, that's the final ranking here. And as a reminder, there is a three hundred dollar pot. We're gonna have to figure out how that's gonna work now because we okay. didn't put that money in the pot at the beginning. Okay, to that point. Okay, so the winner we're formally announcing is Brad, right? Yes, one hundred seventy-two points. Happens, unless a miracle happens between, before December thirty-first, and and Silk Song drops. I don't know what the miracle would would have. I don't, well, to be yeah, the, not but, even not even that would be. You know, unless tape to tape pulls in thirty no, points or something. No. Y'all don't have to send any cash until January one. I don't, you know, like we don't have to. I'm not collecting today. Okay. Okay. All right. So he's, he's you're worried about that. He's not going to send it to a collection agency until. I'm going to fucking mail a box of pennies to your house. <laughs> That's a lot of pennies. <laughs> Y'all. That's going to cost a lot to ship. Yeah, <laughs> it might cost yeah. more to ship if it than actually. If y'all don't make good before we start the next draft, then I feel like. Then it's our drafts are meaningless. Yeah. Okay. You know, real, it's, we, real we quick on making oh, good. Oh, I don't like what Chris Davis is about to say. Okay. All right. So Brad, so since you're the winner, all right, I'm giving you two options here. Number one, uh, I can oh, I can give you options. cash. Okay. I can give you cash, the fifty dollars that we agreed to. Or you to. can take whatever's behind or, door number two. <laughs> or you I can give you what's in the uh, mystery well, package. Money well, Hall like Paradox. The Money TikToks. Hall Paradox. Don't do it. Now, this is like I will say TikToks. this is something you would definitely would want that you would never buy for yourself that has a monetary value of about $50. What are you, Chris Davis? Oh, we have man. To, we're, we're here to talk business. This is business. 
This is business. Sir, okay, I'm telling that's you. A very, that's a very interesting prospect, Chris Davis. We'll I have just to... bought a TV. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. It's, Chris Davis is like, well, then you don't, then right. you don't want look, this. You could know need what? a TV. I, look, <laughs> look, I don't, Chris Davis, you're weird. His also, Faustian bargains. It's just $50. It's I a copy of Demon's Souls. <laughs> it's just 50 you know, I will say I'll, your kids would like back. it too. Oh my, my God. Kids would like it. Mm, no, it's a tickle me went Elmo. Down. Went, went down in my interest level. So my yeah. interest. <laughs> Well, okay. it, it ties into no. something you really enjoyed this year. Uh, Baldur's Gate? No, I but something it. else you played. I will not okay. say what. All but right, trust right. me, well, I, I, I bought this, this pre- specifically because I thought you would win. Oh, oh, so so this is this is my this is the payoff. This is re- this relevant is... to my interests. Yes, this is relevant uh, to your interests. OK, I will answer this by the end of the show. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. There you go. All right. Okay. So with that, with that in mind, do you guys have any surprise? Like, you know, no. Take this instead. Okay. <laughs> I'm paying you in V bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm paying you in short cards. I mean, you you never specified a currency. You said That's fifty true. bucks. That could be anything, really. That could be uh, fifty pieces I'll, of venison. All right. I'll drop my Venmo in our uh, staff chat. Fifty bucks. Okay. Let's get to it. We need to we need to fig- we need to figure okay. out some specifics. Okay, real quick. So, yeah. Oh, go ahead. You have, you have you have a plan, I think. A plan of attack for no, this. No, no. Well, you, I want to hear you real quick. I mean, I I, I think the most basic thing to decide. Well, first of all, um, how many people in our league are participating? Ed has has yes. expressed interest in wanting to participate. I'm not sure he if Carlos is, is doing it again. Carlos, okay. um, yeah, he's in. Come on. Okay, so that would be seven. Seven people in our in, in our in our league. Um, two. Um, how are we going to determine the order? Because last year it was a dice roll in the draft, right? Was it a was it a dice roll specifically? Well, it was a random number generator? generator, yeah. Random. So we generator. we specified, I think, that the loser uh, it goes in reverse losing reverse order. So order. the loser goes first, and then da 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 da. I don't know if we specified any rules for next year while we were doing the draft, but it is I something we can... It, I mean, I would it, also it, say that when we did that, we didn't know anything about what we were doing and maybe we weren't... Yeah. Best, we shouldn't be listening to past the, selves. The, the, the thing about that now is if it is something we agreed on and we can listen back to that show, that's fine, but either way, it's something we need to talk about because we're we're now what discussing people it in who hindsight didn't knowing before? the rankings, you know what I mean? So it's what about a little... the people who didn't participate before? Like, yeah, exactly. Like, I, it. Mean, I mean, I feel like random number generation is probably the most honest way you can handle I agree. it, especially because like going last is not even like necessarily like obviously the first round pick can be huge, right? Like Zelda was huge, obviously. Um, the good thing, or not, maybe not the good thing, depending but, on how you look at it, but like the the one thing about twenty twenty four versus twenty twenty three is, I and. We don't need to like tell me how wrong I am in saying this, but I'm just saying like there. I don't think there's many, if any, obvious. Like there's not a Zelda that we know about right now. You know what I mean? Like there's not that. Nick, you're so wrong. Oh my god. There are great yeah. games coming out that we know about. There's great of games course. that we think are coming out. You know, but like <laughs> there's it's not that obvious one. Like honestly, whoever goes first could go in any number of directions. We all knew last year whoever got first was going straight for Zelda. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's a little different. I mean, and it's not it's not like all the first round picks were even like all, all the top scorers, right? I mean, right. Yeah, I mean, they did well, right? But Silk Song didn't come out. According to Nick, Final Fantasy 16 was a tragedy. Um it was. Resident Evil remake did well. Baldur's Gate 3 obviously did well. Street Fighter 6 did well. Yeah, I mean, look. Look, it was mostly that Zelda thing we were all chasing, but I mean, it's a snake draft. I mean, what, what? Okay, I'm fine with that. I just wanted to ask we, the question. We, I think we, we we should uh, we should. I mean, what does everybody think, right? Like, like my opinion is going to be based on the fact that that means I would draft last, so I don't necessarily. Want uh, you that, know, but... I remember us talking about doing reverse seeds for the draft because that's the way they do it in professional we sports. Just, but we have they to go do. Listen. 
No, no. Okay. Hang on. Just well, let me finish what I'm fucking saying, Brad. Yeah, go ahead. We did definitely talk about that. We did definitely right. talk about doing that. Um, I think the reason for doing that was predicated off of an understanding that, like, you know, professional sports leagues do that because they're still largely the same organization year to year. They just draft new players and have to compete with the same kind of roster they already have yeah. beyond draft pick, right? Here, we're, like, completely starting from scratch, so, like, you know, it, it it's... It may not I make guess if we sense. were if we were worried about playing this game for 10 years and, like, Brad winning year after year and he runs, like, four or five years in a row, we might say that. But, like, I don't know if it makes as much sense to do it that way. And I think that random chance is maybe the m- most equitable way to deal with it. Okay. With Ed joining, it's... Let's, okay, you can't we do have your decisions it, to It's make, like a so... moot point. Also, this is the only way that the most funny thing can happen which is that nolan goes first again (laughs) yeah and i think we should create that that potential scenario i hate that that would be the funny i mean we we would all hate it but we would all laugh um you know and cry at the same time but yeah you're right you're right let's go ahead decision made we're gonna do random number generator again vote Um, all in favor i i say so so I think Nay. as far as as far as like it. rules rules for the league, um, there, here's size. what I want to discuss. I want to discuss draft size. I want to discuss any changes to bidding. I want to discuss counterpicking because I know that's been contentious. And I want to fourth. I want to discuss what qualifies as a draftable pickable game, such as um, early access to 1.0. Um, remakes versus remasters which honestly i think a lot of our rules for like what counts as a pickable game i thought were pretty good this year but i know there's some contention about some of that stuff so first let's start with draft or no i think first we should start with what qualifies as a pickable game because that might actually dictate the size of our draft you know because if all of a sudden we're no longer allowing for early access games and and it, it, when we start omitting what counts as like a pickable game, then I think that makes it harder to do a fuller draft, if that makes sense. So let, let's figure out what y'all want to allow. When it comes to early access, year. would it make sense? And maybe would it make sense to like deem early access as excluded during the draft, but pick upable, but make them pick up later? In uh, the I year? don't think you can. I don't think you can make that. There's no. I mean, we can enforce it. it it's, either on, it's either on or off. But what what is the purpose of that exactly? I mean, I don't. I, I'm I'm just kind of. I'm. The 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 point is is 1.0. Like like if if we think a game is is going 1.0, then you know draft a bit. Like, are we allowing for that? Are we ever going to be able to like draft a Hades? Right. Like the well, the way I mean, see it. What what are the games that this is likely to affect? I mean, well, I just can't the imagine. There's so many. There's so many. I, I like, can't yeah. imagine a like. Imagine if this year, and I'm not even just saying for you, Brad. I'm just saying specifically. Can you? I can't imagine a year in which we weren't allowed to draft Baldur's Gate three, one of the that biggest releases of the year. Time. Um, it's like I feel like when you look at these lists, like it's super reflective of 2023 and the games that like we play are and are interested in. But right. like, if all of a sudden, there's a lot of stuff that comes out in early access, and it's not just um you know stuff like Baldur's gate it, it's you know it, like look at this year i mean there is big early a- stuff in early access like stuff that i've played and i've loved like like a halls of torment i played a ton of this year the fact that like no one can ever pick that sucks right and like I... there's still an inherent risk while Baldur's gate did fucking great i had issues with ultra kill which got counterpicked never came out valheim which i wasted my my uh my super drop on or whatever like mm-hmm. it's never like a sure thing you're still rolling the dice and you can always run into the situation where it doesn't get enough reviews because it comes out at a bad time um i think the rule should be though if it has there was some issue there was some contention because Baldur's gate had a 70 on metacritic we all knew yeah. that that meant nothing but maybe i i 
in my opinion, I think we should allow for early access to 1.0. But if there's any score at all on Open Critic, it's no no go. Which I... we would have to enforce ourselves, right? We would have to, if somebody dra- says they want to draft or pick up a game that is an early access, we would have to check to see if it has any early access well, reviews. Fantasy on Critic, Critic warns you. It says, "Hey, this game yeah, has a score already." That's true. Yeah, that's true. so. So, I don't know. I mean, I also think, Brad, maybe you're kind of reacting to me being pissy and upset, which, you know, I kind of already admitted that that's all that was going on, was I was pissy that I lost and was just kind of being like, this isn't fair, I hate this game. So um, let, let, let me ask this real quick. There's not I how it's I just, actually it's feel. Conversation. There, there's other leagues that don't allow for early access to 1.0. Um, that's the only reason I, I, I'm wondering if you are okay with it, because there's also a lot of leagues that do allow for remasters. They allow for for DLC, which I think is crazy. Mm. Uh, I don't necessarily think we should do that. I don't no, think. No, do I no, think no, that's no, no. a bad idea. But because uh, Elden Ring right. is going to be the winner. Are there are there yeah. rules? Yeah. Are are there? Are we talk? Are are we okay with rules that we enforce ourselves that can't necessarily be automatically enforced by Open Critic? Because I'm wondering. Like, can we impose, critic. yeah, fantasy credit. Could yeah. we impose a, like one early access game limit per That's person? That's exactly what I was going to suggest. Oh. Cause if I think we could do that because we, we do have manual. the qualifiers from this year, which was the new game, the, the yeah. new IP. So, so, so it gets a little tricky when we're handling that though, because like, so I, mean, I get one, one but it. am I allowed to drop that for another one? You know, I think it... I think that I think the I think at, at the end of the day, all the lists should be limited to having one game that was out in early access prior. But it, it it's a game that has it gets a little dicey, right? Because you know if that gets counterpicked, well, we're gonna talk about counterpicks. Um, I mean, I, I'm, again, I'm saying if if we want to come up with a list I, I of rules okay that we have like, to monitor mm-hmm. ourselves and enforce, we could say. Everybody gets one early access game, and those games can't be counterpicked or something along those lines. I mean, you know what well, I mean? Like, we, I don't. Mm, we'll get I'm not saying we should do that. I'm just saying if if we're comfortable making up our own rules and kind of policing them ourselves, we can kind of do whatever we want. As long as it doesn't get dicey with you know, um, yeah, okay. I mean, so so my answer, in my, in my opinion, I think we can do some sort of self-monitoring on like a manual rule like that that's not supported um and that's not it's an interesting idea so so one of the things that i saw another league do that i I think i brought up with nick a couple weeks ago a week or two ago was that one of the things that their league does is they let so they the league the fantasy critics site does allow for this thing called a super drop and a super drop lets you drop a game even that's on your list even if it it's out and it has a score. You get one super drop, it's gone, which means oh, Nick could have dropped Redfall if he wanted to oh, after wow. it came out, after it had a score. But the, the the thing that they do with the super drop is they it has to be purchased. In their league, it was for $35 and it had to be done in the first half of the year, which means you couldn't just get save it all the way till the end of the year, drop something to kind of like put yourself Make ahead your at the last yeah. minute. You know what I mean? I thought that was kind of an interesting idea and the reasoning that they gave, which makes sense is that that way, if you are someone who gets like a red fall, just like super unfortunate, no one saw it coming. You basically, he has no chance at, at first place anymore. That sucks because he had to, he had to sit through the whole year knowing he was never going to win. This kind of gives that. Would y'all be interested that that would be another rule that we would kind of have to like manage ourselves? I mean, Although I'm okay with that. Are, I'm, interested. In the system. I'm not opposed. I like that. It's, it's almost how, like a, you know, how much do we want dropping to, your do we lowest want to cost, uh, test score, right? How much do we want it to cost though? Um, so in that league, it was like $35. Um, which so, God, so what, what is the value says, of $35 is hard to say in the first. So half say the somebody year, says they want to, they want to use their super drop. How do we go about enforcing that on the fantasy critic side? Do we say, do so we just super have drop to... is something that you can, is oh, it's, something it's, you plug it's into the rules. Okay. So, so you would set the league to have allow for one super drop. The part where we enforce it is the cutoff um, date, the, the, the cutoff date and the, the money. Somehow we would have to get the money mm-hmm. from the player. But 
Um, I don't think we have to agree on like an amount specifically today, but how do y'all feel about having that? Just so like if you do get like a yes. golem or something, it doesn't tank your whole league for the rest of the year. Yes. yes. I think anything that avoids that, like we're in the summer and it's like, there's no way I can win kind of yeah. feeling. So, but what is the cutoff sure. date? Like November 1st or something? Or No, no, no. The, the, oh, the cutoff well date for that June other league was, was July 1st, like first yeah, half yeah. of the year. Yeah. Okay. You have to okay. do that super drop in the first half of the year. And you have to I like buy that it. idea. You have to use yeah. your money. So all right. Um, I like that. Okay. Uh, an- another What's thing next? that I see other leagues do. Okay, so so there's the concept of a public draft and a private draft. And I did kind of ask around in the Discord to find out what people like. And I was surprised to see that most people do like the public draft, which is what we did. Uh, which mm-hmm. is when when a game gets bid on, everybody can see what it is. They just can't see the amount. They can't see who did it, but they see that that, that game was bid on. With the private draft, you get a notification that's say, saying something was bid on, but you don't know what the game is. So mm. what, it, what it leads to is kind of scrambling to see, well, what was just announced? Why is this person bidding on a game this week? What is it? Trying to guess what it is to see if you want to try to snipe it. Um, what the arguments I heard in favor of the public draft, which is kind of not the default, it's sort of the newer thing that they do. I think we had to switch. We we chose public draft over the default last year, is mm-hmm. because it encourages. How should I say this? It and this is what pe- people told me as well, and I I, I sort of agree. A, a a private draft is more for leagues where everyone is like obsessed with fantasy critic while a public draft kind of lets people more casually pay attention. And then when they see a game pop up, decide then if they want to try to snipe it or not, which I think honestly is probably a good, I think we should keep it as the public draft. It makes the bidding part a little bit more competitive, right? Where it's mm-hmm. like, you know, oh, should I do $5 or should I do $10? What is Nick going to do with the mm-hmm. private draft? Most people most of, those people can... set, like, most of those leagues set a bid minimum to like $3 instead of $1. So people aren't just getting free $1 games constantly. But the, I, from what I understand, the bidding part is a little less competitive and it requires more people to be constantly paying attention. To also, the options. Super Mario 3D versus Super Mario 2D thing couldn't have happened with private bidding, I don't think. Well, because you, it, because it could we, have. You can well, bid I mean, on those technically could have, but like when I, when I bid uh on the 3d mario game i was kind of forcing people's hands to like okay yeah. if we want to get it well, now, I I have to bid right now okay right yeah. but I, you, had, you had to bid right then and right then and there y'all wouldn't uh, or you, have seen it but so, yeah. yeah like if, if you do that in the middle of, t- of the middle of the year and there hasn't been a super mario 3d game announced nobody's gonna guess that you were bidding on the super mario 3d and then you somebody would have just gotten that game super cheap and there never would have been that competitive like inter- entertaining the, the, like, the only thing of, in debate in favor of the private draft is like the constant paranoia which can be fun (laughs) but i think Uh, are you okay with sticking to the public draft i'm okay with the public because like i've given i mean i've paid attention to fantasy critic as much as i right yeah and i feel like the i feel like i would be one i feel like i would get lost if we were doing yeah okay let's do it you would have never stolen rise of three from me you fucking asshole (laughs) <laughs> all right so we're all sticking right, so, with public so bidding everyone's okay with public okay it was a solid um, 84 something like that so so we we've agreed on we've agreed on uh public bidding we've agreed on super a, a purchasable super drop in the first half of the year we're and we're okay mm-hmm. with with early access to 1.0 but maybe with some limits maybe yes I think just so. One. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, real quick, just because I think it was kind of dumb, and there's no point, and it really real quick, maybe early access. To click the draft real quick, early, real, just to clarify, early access with a imposed limit, which we're just less for, for argument's sake, let's say limiting one per list, but also with the with the uh, the added thing of it can't have a review on open yeah. critic already. I mean, how, how about if it's something like in the draft, you can only draft one. You know what I mean? Or, or like, um, so I kind of like it in the draft, right? Be- because if, if someone were to like, um, actually, like, actually, know, I like that idea. If we thought Hades was going to come out, that's all of a sudden. So you're saying pick, right? you can only draft them. You can't pick them up in the middle of the year mm. because I feel like it, if, if you, if you want early access, you have, to, you have to, you have to, you have to take the risk no, the, up that's... front. The the only problem with the so the only problem with with I I feel like what sucks about limiting it 
so much in that way would be when you are dropping games or just you're just trying to look for games sometimes like that i i don't think we should limit it cut down on a lot of the selection yeah to jump in real quick brad i I, i'll echo and and kind of maybe go the direction you were saying i I feel like first off in our league next year we're gonna have one more person which Mm -hmm. means that many fewer games and to choose from we are gonna have Um, shorter lists i think that's correct while while, i know that's true but while, while early access you know okay yeah we choose at the beginning of the year there are definitely games that i've never even heard of until mm-hmm. june or july or august of that year um and so to to limit us to only doing it in the initial draft i think is it it would it would just limit the number of games that you know okay. that are available in general i, I don't I'm think convinced. we should limit it to yeah okay i'm convinced yeah yeah um okay what about what about uh, so, where, so, where are we going so, next uh, a so well draft size but we also need to talk about how we want to hand, handle counter picks now i know there's been a lot of talk about people kind of not happy with counter picks and obviously you i know, think there it, was just confusion but, which i think if the, we can the, clarify the if we can clarify how counter picks work because i feel like it was it was yeah. coming up a lot throughout the year of, of people okay. not really understanding okay. how they were working and the, they were supposed to work to begin with okay. well everyone everyone knows now obviously but but so 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 the thing is with the counter picks is if your game gets counter picked during the draft, uh, you can no longer drop it for any reason. Uh, not even I, I'm drop? pretty sure the super drop cannot because it's so directly affecting someone else's yeah. score as well. Even the super drop cannot super drop a counter pick. Now okay. the the reason I feel like we have counter picks are a good thing is it it adds a lot of tension in another direction, right? It adds a lot of attention for the draft, right? Because your picks not have to be something that since we do allow for drops, you know, if it gets like a release date or, and we could talk about the drop if a game isn't out yet. Right. Which we had one uh, this year. Um, I feel like if we don't have counter picks, then people can just do, I'll take a 3d Mario, you know, they can draft games that are just like bullshit right which Mm -hmm. is fine like so so the obviously the idea of like a 3d mario coming next year is like a pretty exciting thing right because that's another easy 96 or whatever right in theory if it is you know something like a that's the mortal kombat 12 (laughs) no but it's not like a mortal kombat 12 right the the thing is it's something that is is like "Mm, that's kind of bullshit but if it's also something that people might be afraid to counterpick because if they counterpick it and it does come out, then all of a sudden they're going to lose like 30 points. <laughs> they're going to lose a lot of points. Right. So there's something kind of exciting about a game. Like I dare you to counterpick this. Right. Like, and, and I feel like 3d Mario is one that I am not going to be surprised if it shows up in like the first or second round of our draft this year, which is kind of exciting but it's only exciting if we have counter picks. If there's no counter picks, then I, I mean, if, if anybody would fucking draft it because I, you can just drop it. Um, I, th- I I I think counter. I I would never suggest getting rid of counter picks. I think it makes. Oh. I think it adds a little bit of spice. I, 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 yeah, I don't know. We we maybe before we go into long conversations about whether we should or shouldn't have something, we should ask everybody if we should or shouldn't have it. Cause I don't think anybody's like, yeah, no, picks. I know Th- this one is based on a previous conversation that I think, yeah, it was with crispy, which crispy did admit. He was just kind of, um, spiraling a little bit. He was about... pissed off. Yeah. Because I couldn't drop. Uh, Warhammer. 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 Yeah. Warhammer. Yeah. how do you feel yeah. about Warhammer. kind of picks Warhammer. before we're going to go back to you, crispy. Cause I know I just, Never mind. He's got his hand on his chin. Continue, Crispy. I uh, no. I it, it, I was waiting for you to stop talking, Brad. You got to stop talking sometimes. He never um, stops talking. Yeah, he, no, he never does. So, oh, like, geez. I'm generally okay with the idea of counter picks. My greater concern is the amount of counter picks uh, against the overall number of games that we're going to be having on our lists. It's true, um, especially if we have fewer games next year. That's the thing, is that 2023 has been an exception for releases this year. Okay. And I did the math. I did the math. So we each did got 14 games, okay? Not mm. counting our counter picks. So six times 14, 84 games. If we did a seventh person, which would be Ed, 
to do that same number, we would have to have 12 games apiece. I think, honestly, we ought to just have that stop at 10 games and potentially do two counter picks. Well, we, for, first of all, real quick, we did two counter picks per person this year. We're all we're already kind of in the of the opinion that we're going to have shorter lists. So I, I do think we this is a good time to have the conversation about the size of the, of the draft at the beginning. Yes. So like so so if our total roster was 10 games per person and we're one doing one last thing on counter picks though before we get into size is that some leagues I've seen it do like a counter pick during the draft and then you still have a counter pick that you can use anytime you want throughout the year which right. honestly feels a little bit more like toxic to me no i, I completely agree i think the, i think counter picks should be locked yeah. in right from the start That's i kind of like point. the idea of doing them during the draft but i i do think that two i feel like one counter pick is almost too easy and 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 the the counter pick is kind of like the balancer everybody lost on counter picks except yeah, everybody lost points on counter picks, but it's also an, a way to to do well, even if you don't get like a good draft position. Like I won not just because of Baldur's Gate, but because, you know, I only lost five points in counter picks and some people lost like dramatically more than you that. will probably win. Well, OK, <laughs> probably we will. Wait. We will wait for January. 1. We will wait for January. 1. <laughs> I was like, wait a second, what? Oh, okay, I get it. Uh, uh, real quick, uh, real quick, to Skirl to Sterling Sky in chat uh, asks, what happens if you counterpick a game that doesn't release? When you get when a game is counterpicked, uh, oh, you what happens if you pick a game that doesn't release? Then <laughs> you laugh at that person who just got fucking hosed. Yes. So Here's I, the whole point. Wait, real quick, hold on. Okay. It, the point of counterpicks at the very beginning of the year, you counterpick a game. You want you want to counterpick a game that you th that you are convinced is either going to score badly or is not going to release at all. If you score if it scores badly, you get all the points that they're going to lose. If you if if you counterpick a game that doesn't release, you both end up with a goose egg. And a, and York and the assumption is going into it that most people are going to lose points on counterpicks. Yeah, so if you get a goose egg, if you pick if you counterpick a game that doesn't come out, it's kind of like best case scenario for you you're not gonna i mean it's not best case you could technically get points but like it's a comfortable position to be in yeah, yeah the person who's whose game you counterpicked gets screwed because they can't drop it therefore they're stuck with the goose egg so so this is why i think we should counterpicks are interesting we all agree we we like them but the reason i think we should do two is because that first round of counterpicks i feel like was easy it was the second round where it was like yeah that's true this is tough this is like high risk now i have to yeah. pick something that i think is is gonna come out and is probably gonna do okay but i gotta make that decision and that's exciting now if we cut down the draft size we drafted six games no no, no. last year I, we, drafted, we drafted we drafted eight eight games eight games eight games so here's can i pitch can i think I we should just do one or two less like so I was going to pitch six. I was going to pitch for the initial draft. Consider this seven, seven people initial draft, um, six games. And then that leaves if we're let's just say we're going to do a roster of 10. Six games of the draft leaves four pickups throughout the end of the year, and then we can still do the stipulation of you have to pick at least two games that are yeah. new games, new franchises uh, I, I, and then two counter picks. Mm. But 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 th that's just leading to less action throughout the year, and it's going to be a long year. I feel like it's okay to do a shorter this draft, is why, this but but like last year. why? But like why do wait what? No, is, the year every year is the same length. It's, sorry, just never mind. Typically, no, no, no. yeah, it's. I'm saying it's going to be a long year versus a draft night. Like we're going to want some action. What if we did six and six? Wait, what did we do this year? We did eight and. Six? Well, eight and six, on. yes. Because it was be 14 okay games. Six six? Because so I mean, had, that's we each had 14 dramatic. games. We each had 14 games and we did eight. Yeah, and we did eight. So we did we eight during the draft and then 12. six pickups. Yeah. I, so I if we did like six, six. I mean, I feel like draft night's a big deal. So, so we definitely want at least six. But I feel like cutting two on draft night, if we're adding in Ed. Um, I still haven't got a response from Carl. Okay, then how about how about six and six? We do six drafts, six pickups. That leaves that's twelve instead of fourteen, so two less per per two less per I like person. Action. And I feel like the money has to matter if we're if we're 
selling super drops, right? And so we have to have games to four just seem, maybe five. Maybe I'd be okay with five, but four seems too little for a whole year to bid on, you know? Because let me tell you, it feels kind of shitty when you're like I had my roster full, like with months and months till to go. It feels kind of bad because it feels more engaging when you're paying attention to the games that are coming out. And when it's full up, it's kind of like, oh, well, I just got to wait now, which waiting sucks. Uh, Zero Skies uh, in chat does bring up a good point. It is a leap year, so we get one extra day. Okay. Yes, <laughs> a whole 24 extra hours. Um, Fuck, it is going to be a long year. So I do <laughs> think there's plenty of games. I think we ran out of games because a lot of us were waiting. I mean, all, most of us waited like pretty far. I think it was mostly just Chris Davis that filled his up like really quickly. I just wanted to get done. Um, I want to move on with my life. But great attitude. I don't. Know. I think six, yes. and, <laughs> is six, six and six is good. And, 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 and with and another six. person, two counter picks would be kind of balanced out. That adds a, that adds up, adds up to eighty four picks total, which is exactly what we had this year, isn't it? Isn't that what we said? Yes. Six times how many? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we had no trouble finding the games for the right, right, right. Yeah, right. but that's twenty twenty three. Twenty twenty four is a different story. Oh, okay, stop it. I just, Kyo, I just think should, it's going to be considerably Kyo's more dramatic and tough. Has like a list of hundreds and hundreds of games. I think the draft um, will be tougher. I don't think pickups will be any tougher. You know what I mean? Like we might have to stretch a little bit. Hard. We might have to dig a little deeper during the initial draft, but during the during the year, it's going to be just as it's going to be just the same as as it was this year. Um, um, I mean, six and six, six and six. I just, I just think draft night's very exciting, but I guess. Do, when we were at the at the at the end of our draft last year, or was anyone really struggling? The thing is, the fantasy critic site keeps like a huge list of the games and their hype levels coming out. Mm-hmm. I don't think we're gonna have trouble finding the games for draft night. And I and Plus, I do have an idea for a drama thing. Every year we we put together a list of like two hundred plus games no i don't think it'll be a i don't think don't think it'll be a problem it's just it's just it feels like it 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 might feel like it's going to be a a problem because there's not as many obvious like zeldas and Baldur's gates and that kind of thing but that's that's, not even the interesting ones the interesting ones are are the other shit who's gonna do silk song this year um i mean dude i think silk song look full disclosure silk song is easy did y'all see pick. memes aside? There's did no y'all way that see not coming out the picture week. I posted in Discord a few a few days ago? The, a picture mm-hmm. on my phone that I took with my camera <laughs> of E3 2019. I think it was 2019 or maybe oh, 2018. Yeah. Standing in the Nintendo booth, watching someone over their shoulder playing Silk. Okay. Um, quick question. What the yeah. fuck? This Can one, I... this one did come up. It's a small rule. Wait, 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 wait guess... hold on. Only affected my list. Sorry, real quick. What, Chris Davis, what did you want to? Well, I want I want to propose an idea here since we're going into year two of Fantasy Critic. Idea. So Can when I do it my comes quick before we get into big ideas. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Brad. Go. Well, no, this is just a little rule that we all need to agree on or not disagree on. Um, one of the things that we allowed for this year is for me to pick up something like um, a Falcom game that came out in japan but did not come out mm. here yet right i think that so, is one of the things we should crack down on a little bit because so like for example like east 10 is out in japan there's no reviews or anything on metacritic but it is coming out this year probably but if you can Y'all, go we, we just need re- to decide i don't care either way but we need to decide no if you yes can no go out that. and find you may have to dig for it but if you can, if you can go out and find written or video evidence of someone who has played that game all the way through and has opinions about it. I feel like it, I feel like it probably shouldn't be drafted or. Okay. I, I but I mean, again, again that's still something that rewards research, right? I mean, well, but like, I, I, I feel it proud feel of, like the whole point is you're supposed to be taking game. one. I don't think I mean, it's going to come it. up very often. I, I just, um, I just feel like very often, like, oh, let me tell you, it's about dra- whether I'm going to draft the next East game or not, um, which came out, you know, I'm just saying like September early early access is early access is kind of hard enough to kind of come to agreement on. But if you're talking about a game mm-hmm. that has been released and played by thousands of people in another country, I feel like, like just With because no the opinions Western are reviews. no Western reviews, but the fact that like 
thousands upon thousands of people have played it in Japan and have opinions about it, that's that can certainly paint a picture of what it, of how of it's going to be received. Of it's just all of, all of these picks. You can, I feel like it just whole... it, it, it 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 removes it removes a little bit of controversy, which yeah, you know. It's just I feel like there's so no. many choices. There are so okay. many choices I, to be we made. We just need the clarification that... because it's it is a checkbox. Okay. Right. Then Com- my, then my compromise no. compromise in this regard. Can we theoretically block you from picking it up uh if it has released in any territory whatsoever? Well, that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking. Yeah. About. That's the conversation. If it, if it has been released okay, in I'm any sorry. territory, if it has been released in any territory and people have played what the Japan? game like the full ass game. Uh, yeah. I don't think it should qualify. Okay. That's fine. We okay. just need All right. to set that in stone. Uh, one last thing, super quick. The fucking new game franchise thing, let's just get rid of it. All that does is is make our list ah. look disorganized. No, I, think I, dis- I disagree there. The new I, I game like franchise? That. Yeah, it forces you to pick something. It means you can't just make an entire list of sequ- sequels. Any, was anybody struggling because of that rule? All it did is make me have to toggle the draft order thing at the top because they always put that shit at the bottom and it was annoying. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I like that it forced people to take chances on things like wild hearts and yeah. because of the balls. size of our draft, we're all going to be drafting indie games anyways. That's why it, it became such a non thing. Right. Okay. What, I, what, am I crazy? Did, can you do it the other way around? Can you say you have to pick a certain number of sequels? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. No, no. Okay. What? I mean, I... so, 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 okay. Here's the thing. I think it's like a stupid thing with the exception of maybe you force one on draft night. So, because I feel like draft night is like pretty well, safe. We did force, like... we did force two on draft night. Yeah. Um, yeah. On, yeah. Yeah. On our original, yeah, we, we originally drafted there. Were, you had to have two new game franchises. Oh, and okay. at the end of the year, you had to have three total. I think, I think this year, since we're reducing the number, maybe you have to have run on one on draft night okay. and one for the rest of the year. So Wait, you, but did, you, we drop that number. So you only have to have two new game franchises in total. Okay. So, so there are, which I, again, I'm fine with. I, I just hated having to click the draft order button every time I looked at my I don't know. I, I never clicked that once. I don't. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like what it does is it puts, it puts your new game franchises at the bottom. So you don't get to see the order that you drafted the shit unless you hit that toggle. I just Uh-oh. hated I, that. I also um, am not sure what toggle you're referring to. So uh, when you go to fantasy, oh, critic, I, I, see, I see it now. I've literally order, never pressed order. that button in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe I'm just being a little uh, persnickety. Uh, the, the, the thing is um, there are other flags where like, you know, we required people to, re- to do one new game franchise. There's other flags. Like you're required to have one remaster or you're required to have one DLC. Do we care about any f- more flags like that? I'm, I don't think so. I'm more interested no. in just, I'm just interested in I want to make sure pe- people are taking chances on new IP. Yeah. Yeah. It Which could be really easy to, to make an entire issue. I know it's not an issue, but theoretically speaking, you could make right, an entire list. If it's not an list. issue, then what does it matter that it's there? No, literally yeah. just the draft order thing. Okay. Well, then, yeah. I don't. If, if I, I mean, the, uh, what? If, I don't even know what we're talking about. If it's not a problem and all you got to do is click a toggle, who cares? Well, that's why I, I think keep it, it. because, because I, I don't think, think it made our league any remotely interesting. I don't think any of it, any of us found it challenging or had to make a hard decision because of that rule. It was just a, I, I think mean, you can, I think anything. you can, I think you could easily, especially in a year like 2024, where there's a lot, uh, where there might not be a lot of obvious picks. You could, it'd be really easy to just dig in there and find a f- bunch of sequels to games that have proven. I mean, we're going like to find that, that have well, well. But I mean, look, oh, yeah. it's fine. It's fine. I just thought I'd bring it up. I'll keep okay. clicking that button for another year. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to Chris Davis. What was your idea? Does okay. Suicide Squad kill the Justice League count as a new franchise? Um, apparently we gotta ask ourselves these questions. That's now. that's a I've Okay. Uh, anyway. Anyway, um so one of the things that we had going on a lot last year were drops, right? Um just figuring out what we wanted to drop and whether there was meeting a release date or things like that. I want to suggest the idea that if you had a game that did not release or did not drop on your list come draft night you get one priority pick if that is chosen by someone else so for example okay so 
Nick, Silent Hill 2 Remake, if that comes out in 2024, who knows? But supposing that it's coming out in 2024, and for some reason, Nolan, who is in advance of the queue, the order, decides he wants to have that be his pick for that round. Since it was already on your list, you could theoretically get the option to say, hey, I'm taking that instead. You take your turn immediately um, and you don't take it. And that's it for the round for you. I see what you're saying, but I feel like that complicates the process. Not only that, but it's also already unfair. Even if we were to agree on this, it would literally only affect next year and the year after. Well, I'm literally talking about just one game. You only get one for the draft night. But but we can't make rules based on what? Like I would have priority on Warhammer. Yes. That would be Silk Song, Warhammer, Silent Hill Two, maybe Tape to Tape. I don't know. Well, there there was more. Like again, I'm talking about like all of our drops from the past year. Oh, I don't well, think I I don't drops. I'm saying I don't think. Look, I don't think Carlos should get the reward of first dibs on Silk Song because he was, you know, <laughs> dumb enough to yeah, draft I mean, it last year. Like, I don't think dumb yeah. enough. He, he was dumb. Was, this it wasn't, dumb. it wasn't dumb. It wasn't a dumb draft. Uh, but yeah, I don't. Also, Mr. Papa shot points out that that means Ed kind of gets boned. Oh, that is yeah, a good point. Again, yeah. Last year should not affect this year unless we set it into stone. Now see where you were going 2025. I see where you were going, Chris Davis. Okay. I don't think can, it's probably going to work out. Though. Can we talk about the thing I wanted to talk about now, which Go is ahead. I think the prize for winning next year is we get to ban somebody from the server. <laughs> <laughs> we get to ban a community member from the Discord server forever. Ooh. But I could do that already anyways. <laughs> yeah, but, but without without anyone being like, Mom, like, you, so like so like if I was like, like a Sunday and no one if, knows. Uh, here, let me see. If I was like no. if I win next year and I'm like, oh let's see, I wanna ban uh I've already got my pick. He's on the list. I've already got my uh, <laughs> Fucking jaded. I'm gonna ban jaded red. What? If I win, easy, buddy. <laughs> Damn, Damn, man. Right. Who okay. Would you drop right now. Yeah. That should be like our our counter pick. Should be like our one we have to ban if we lose. Oh yeah. My God. Let's play for blood. Okay. It does get us into the the part the fi- I guess I'd say the final part of what we need to discuss here tonight, which is what will our prizes be. Or what? What will the pot be for next year slash punishment? Oh God. Okay, so this and, is like, oh, and this is something we talked about earlier in the year, and I think Nick had a good point, wasn't Nick? I think we should have yes, like a runner-up prize and a loser-up punishment. Did we have as a loser-up? Loser up? As in, you're only but, really safe if you're right in the middle. <laughs> so, so the idea is a reason to fight for it, even if you don't think you're going to be first or last. You know what I mean? So 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 people can't be fussy butts and say, I don't even care anymore. I'm just going to, you know, like, like I don't want that attitude, right? I want people to have a reason to care till the end of the year, no matter what. So the idea was to have like a big, I don't, I mean, it doesn't have to be like a money-based pot again or anything, right? But if we have like a first place prize, a second place prize, that's still cool and not awesome, right? But, and maybe two punishments, especially with an extra person in the league. I feel like it was hard enough to think of one punishment. How are we going to come up with two? It's not hard to think of a punishment. We were just too nice. What do other, what do, okay, this is one of the situations where I have to ask, what do other leagues do for this kind of thing? Electrodes that, strapped to your testicles. Okay. That is a, that is a good question. Um, I thought you were about to be like, that is a good idea. I, <laughs> um, remotely controlled by the other members of the draft. No. <laughs> Um, this doesn't necessarily have to be something we decide right now, but it does again need to be set in stone before draft night. Um, so we need to be thinking about it. Are are y'all okay with the idea we somehow... of having a first place and second Here's place a thought. prize? Here's a thought. Here's okay. I don't have a lot of experience with this kind of thing, so I apologize if this doesn't make sense. But tell me if I'm off base here. Could we make this like a charity thing? 
where we what? each pick a charity or something. You know what I mean? Because that implies that we're trying to get our charity, that our charity is better than others, and we shouldn't be doing that. No. No, I, I mean, okay, well, that's what I'm saying. No, no, because I want to win some fucking money. <laughs> Give to this charity. I don't know. Money now, um, money me, <laughs> money a lot right, of me. Right. Oh God, my fine. Fuck me then. I've, I don't know. Right. I was just well, to Nick's going to personally match any winnings and send it to the charity of his choice at the end of the year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't Nick. know. Help Boo. me out here. I don't. What do there's got? Fine. <laughs> no. Fine. Fuck you guys. Uh, you you get a, if idea. you win, if you win, my you get a fudgy bang. the whale from Caravel. Ice cream well, cakes. I don't know. <laughs> Look, I don't know. It's got to be something. Um, One hundred dollar buy. It's got to be something. I don't. I charity. don't think like cash is. <laughs> Look, I was as as maybe the winner of this league. I was against the idea of like a cash pot last time. That was a crispy where it really went all out for that one. Um, I just think we're like, adults, right? If we're gonna play, yeah. <laughs> but what? What? Um. If we do think of something again, I don't, this has to not be decided on this recording now, but yeah. we need to start thinking. And maybe the community has ideas for our our like prize or whatever. Maybe the community. Maybe are y'all okay the- with the idea of a first and second place prize? That oh man! Yeah. Is- yeah. What if the com- what if the community league winner gets to engage in a pr- in a mini project M with okay. with no, with the winner no. of the- that's too Peter you see, Molyneux of you. you see- I- you see this is why i I suggested we ban somebody (laughs) i i think i have an answer for what the prize should be okay okay the winner gets either a ps5 pro or a switch 2 or switch 2 switch 2 no for money for that yeah who's buying that okay well i mean split between us like seven people like that's not as bad as you think think that's a little too high sticks for me Easy allies? What do you th- what do you think this operation is? Yeah. Uh, Patreon.com slash four player. Oh god. This is still my own personal income that has to Did you see the wizard says how about they get a used four player mug? Uh, <laughs> if if we do money I'll like put on lipstick money based and thing, drink some coffee from it and are we going go. to like create the pot ahead of time? How do they do that? How does like fantasy football do that with the pots? All right, is all right. That all right. money just stays on a website? Yeah. All right. You Here's put it thing. in scrow. This is obviously the kind of thing. We have a little bit of time to figure this out. So if you're if you're listening to this or you're watching us live or whatever, and you have ideas, think them think about them. If you want to pitch them, go to the Fantasy Critic channel in Discord, ping one of us or all of us or whatever the fuck. We do need and, to mention uh, that the community is well, that we're 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 the community is interested. And if you're interested in, in being part of a community league, league, we are hashing out the details now. Now, I think it can be something that, you know, we don't want y'all to be like throwing in money to y'all's own community, to, to a pot, to a pot as a part of like an official like four player community league. What I think we should do is we will like supply the the prize or whatever, but there were some interesting ideas for what that prize could be even like having it be the community art thing anyways yeah so so a couple people liked that idea of there being like a community art thing that like someone in the community like submits art that in that art would be on like a shirt or something that the winner could could win if they win the community league now that which i think is a good idea uh, we, and that's the winner of our league could, hash could, out. could sport that shirt on the, on the podcast or exactly like and, or and, the loser the, 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 the thing about the community league is, is like, like what Nolan was saying, you know, when there's, there's only so many games, right? Um, the, obviously if there's dozens of people who are interested in that doesn't really work, but someone brought up the really good point of like, we can take signups for com- interest in the community league. Um, and depending on, and we would, cut off signups and depending on how many we get we can break those up into smaller leagues so you could have like half a dozen leagues where you know one person each you know you have six different leagues now that can get the zelda game or whatever right that that way you, the, the pot of the amount of games isn't does isn't thinned out so much that it becomes silly 
you just have multiple I mean, leagues. And then, and then at the, the end of, of the year, the person with the, the most points wins yeah. the whole thing. Should the community, if there's, if there's should, six leagues, then yeah, there's going to be six winners. And then you just look at their points yes. and there you go. There's, there's the, their order. So, it doesn't yeah. have to be more complicated than that. So as far as the community leagues go, should, should, should it be like, once we kind of figure out what, since we've kind of figured out all of our rules and how that's going to work, should those leagues mimic exactly how our, I think like, they so should, in terms of I think the they should just, just to make it, to stuff, make yeah. it, uh, just to make it like more so understandable, honestly, yeah. but, but, but here's the thing, whoever is, we're going to do signups at some point. It, you, if you're committing to signing up for one of these leagues or for the community league, you have to commit and we will set a date. Um, and it's probably going to be like a day after ours or something. You have to commit to like showing up for that draft. And that doesn't mean you have to be on like a discord call or anything like the, the way the fantasy critic site is set up. Once the draft has started, it just goes in order. You just need to actually be there to do that draft Make the after picks. the draft. It's fine. If you don't, if you want to fall off the face of the planet and not bid on anything else for the rest of the year, that's fine. You're going to be the last in your little section, but you need to at least to commit to show up to that draft. Um, which I so think is not it's not an unreasonable thing. We will set the date. Um, Should I just put like together a thing to tomorrow and like make it available so people just can see how many people are even interested in participating? Yeah, yeah, that way yeah. we can. Well, okay. we, we have a little bit of time, um, a couple of weeks I think, before we're going to do our, our draft night. Um, we're doing our draft other, on, on tentatively on the is, second. The only other weird thing is I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing. Looking at depending on how many signups we get, if we have a few other leagues to look at, that's that gives you us ideas for shit to draft our bid on ourselves. Is Are y'all okay with that? Meaning let's say Thursday rolls around three weeks into the year and someone has a really good idea and, and it shows up and you, we see it because it's public bidding. Maybe there should stay private bidding. How about that? How about like the one rule change for the community league is that they have private bids, but even then once it gets drafted, we still can see it and we can still can steal those ideas. Yeah. I don't, think, I don't think we need thing. to. I don't think we need to make it private. I think we can. I think we can operate here on the honor system a little bit. You know what I mean? I also like honor the idea system. of if the community has their draft night first and then we go after them. <laughs> no, uh, we go before I feel like them. It should be the other way around, uh, sir. We go before them. <laughs> no, because then they all do it. They get a taste of the process. They're like, "Wow, this is how this works," and then it's like, "Well, I wonder what the podcast is going." I don't know. Stop okay. it. Nope. No, <laughs> we go first. We go first. Um, it won't be super complicated. No, the fantasy critic site does all the work for you. Um, yeah. They even have a list of of games. They even have a huge database of games that people mm -hmm. that have like hype levels and everything. So even if you know nothing about games, you could just pick games off that list on draft night. You just have yep. to be there. It's super easy. It's it's fun. And they've got a it detailed was... FAQ, so it's you know if yeah, you're yeah, and not not to mention you can ask any of us in you know since we've been doing this watch, for a while now. I don't know if our draft from last year is still up. Is it? it yeah, is, I, it, I mean it's not. a podcast. And yeah, so, so yeah, it's on YouTube. Since and... it was the podcast, yeah, you can go watch it. We can maybe yeah, go watch it. Uh, a maybe show. a week or two before the the draft for the community, we can always just link that, Ooh, and we could also maybe really include it in like whatever form yeah. uh, that you create for the signups, Nick. You could always link it in there too. Okay. Um, Mental note, a, just for future, we need to wrap up here. Mental note, just for Chris Davis, we should be thinking of ways to like pretty that up for the actual draft night stream, if possible, Chris, instead of just a screenshot of the web page. Maybe we Chris can. Chris Davis and I can do some zoom. Yeah, we'll that. figure something out. Know. Okay. I'll see if That's there's something we can do. That's all I got for tonight, cool. honestly. All right. I think I, you know, I think that covers it. Um, yep. So I hope I, you know, I hope so somebody knows what we decided. Yes. Yeah. I have everything written down and I know Brad's got, a, yeah. you know, it's, photographic memory it. or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, but I got it. Um, so first of all, uh, thank you guys for listening. Uh, 2023, as far as podcasts go with us, is a wrap. Ooh. Um, Ooh, another year in the bag um so again Jan this is a t tentatively speaking this is our, our plan january 2nd we'll do our draft uh january 9th we'll do our award show we're still gonna we're, we're continuing to kind of like tighten up and like trim the fat on our award show so yeah. it's gonna be lean this year but I i'll also post the community poll so y'all can make your uh y'all can vote 
for your your picks in the award categories as well, just like you can submit your top tens. Which, by the way, uh, the the top ten the poll for submitting your personal top ten games of 2023 is open until December 31st. Um, you don't necessarily have to do it right away. So if you want to wait until the last minute, that's totally fine. Play more games, pick your pick your choices, and submit it before the end of the, before midnight on the 31st. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and again, if you submit in that, that poll, uh, you're going to be entered in a drawing. We'll pick two winners and we'll announce those winners. We'll give you all a free game of your choice. It's just got to be digital. It's got to be something we can send to you on steam or whatever the fuck. Um, so we'll pick those two winners out of a hat and all you gotta, all you gotta do is tell us your opinion on the, your favorite games of the year. It's not that hard. So if you're interested in doing that, go on over to discord.gg slash four player. We have a game of the year, 2023 channel set up. Go in there. It's the link is pinned in that channel. Um, I'll also post it in the show notes for this episode. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, I, I think it's, I think that's it. That's all we got. Yep. Thank you again for listening. We hope everybody has uh, happy holidays um, and you know plays lots of video games. Enjoys time with family and friends. Be safe, and uh, I guess we'll see you guys in Discord. And in 2024 for our next episode. Uh, Good night. Bye. Bye.